Hey, welcome to another episode of Verbal Laxative. I'm Jason. I'm Hassan. Sinsen. Brian. And welcome back to our next... Well, what episode is this? Our Remembrance Day episode. No, that already passed. This is a normal the episode. Veterans Day. <laughs> <laughs> our <laughs> November episode. Okay, yeah, our November episode. The last one was on, or close to Halloween. Oh, yeah. So. Right, yeah, yeah. So this is the first November one. You think it's... I've heard stories where people were stealing donation boxes, oh. and people were saying they're like the scum of the scum. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anybody that steals donation boxes, is like pretty pretty bad. Well, it's, it's worse when it's for the veterans. I think. I think it's yeah. Food or vet- clothing or money. Oh, that's even worse. That's the worst. Yes. Wait, you know, you drop in some change for the poppy. Those yeah. Boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the little poppy boxes. That's a shame. Well, how much money? Well, I, I'm assuming they well, stole it's like crazy, a ton of because they boxes. only stole the donation. They broke the glass, went in the store, and only took the donation box. They left everything else. <laughs> so they targeted that box hard. It's mostly like small change. It's like nickels and dimes. Yeah. Actually, I was watching um, a, a Vanity Fair. They do like interviews with like professionals, and there was a professional bank robber, and he talks. He watches movies and says like how real this is. And he, and he talks about like wow he's carrying a huge bag of bills bills are heavy like it's one gram per bill or something mm-hmm. so like when you're carrying that big of a bag it should be forty pounds but they're carrying it as if it's like five pounds mm-hmm. so sometimes they're saying the movie doesn't depict how heavy <laughs> how difficult it is to steal money you gotta have right. to work out if you're you gotta gonna, work out yeah, yeah. rob a bank so that's why the they steal diamonds because they're worth more per gram than if you were to steal bills yeah. but yeah. the challenge with diamonds is they're not you have to sell them you have to sell, sell them you yeah you whereas cash is free them. or cash is king in the sense that that that's the direct money right you don't yeah. have to sell there's it. no yeah. middleman for it yeah so they call the middleman the fence so when you sell the items back they're called fences and he says that when you're trying to steal you want to steal items that you could sell quickly yeah so he would rather steal a truck full of uh, eye watches than he would for like a picasso painting because that one painting Maybe worth more, but way harder to sell. Right. Makes sense. Unless Makes you sense. want to keep it for yourself. Or, yeah, you want to keep it. But that's the thing. If you're that rich, <laughs> then why would you steal it? You would never steal something. You would well, just you hire someone. You could be poor, to steal. but have it, though. So you would live on the street <laughs> yeah. with Picasso in yeah. your shopping cart? Yeah, you'll be like, this is help your panhandling. You have this Picasso painting behind you. We need, to hear, Please, uh, we need to hear both sides of this argument. We need another thief that will come out and say, no, no, I would steal the Picasso painting. Here is why. <laughs> And then give his counterpoint for why he would prefer that. Then. And then one year later, we see which thief made more money. <laughs> It'd actually be pretty smart if you steal the Picasso painting, keep it in your shopping cart, but just tell everybody that it's a fake. <laughs> <laughs> and no one would expect you to have the real thing anyway. Sounds like a bank scene. And then you hang on to it for like a year like that, and then just a year or two, and then... What could go wrong? Like <laughs> What How do you could know go if wrong? a bank scene is legit? Because he doesn't have, like, a signature or anything, right? You don't. Even, yeah. like, illegit bank. Your shit gets self-destructs. It. That's when you know it's legit. That, it was worth more because it self-destruct. Like, fake half away, right? Like, it stopped. Yeah, yeah. I think, like, the, the battery shredder. died or the something. The battery died, Because yeah. it was so long. And it, it sold even more. Yep. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, so that's how you know. But, like, so how do you know it's his? What if it feels like if, some other dude? If it doesn't self-destruct, it's not his. But he does like a lot of spray paint art on like maybe, buildings. Maybe he pay someone to authenticate. <laughs> the building has to self destruct. <laughs> he <laughs> spreads the own r- the, the rumors. Like I think that's a Banksy. <laughs> <laughs> Every single time. <laughs> It occurred to me because uh, I was looking at my cousin actually had a coffee table book full of Banksy art. Yeah. And it's like a pretty big book, and none I didn't see in any of them like any t- type of signature or anything. So. Or like a tag of some sort. So you just know. You just have to know. Like, what if half that book is not even Banksy? Yeah. Well, I yeah. don't know. Would, would it, like you, an art connoisseur know? Can you copyright? I have no idea. Can you copyright his art? Because he doesn't, you know, claim his art. I don't think there must be something I don't think around so. that. I don't think so. Why, are you going to try to claim them as yours? <laughs> You're going to come out well, and say, I wonder I'm if Banksy. he'll send a cease and desist order. Uh, be money, Banksy, see? Be... <laughs> <laughs> And then they'll say, oh, yeah, draw something for me. And at, the, at that time, you'll fuck up and they'll be like, hey, go eat shit. <laughs> like, where's my shredder? He's <laughs> like, I don't want to shred it. Then no one wants this piece of shit. Gotta <laughs> shred the evidence. Unless, oh, my God, unless unless you can find someone that's gullible. You draw your shitty drawing and they're like, oh, my God, this is the best work I've seen done yet. I feel like when you go through those high-end restaurants, sometimes when you look at those paintings. It kind of feels like they're, that. They feel like garbage. Like. 
we, uh, I went to a pigeonhole, and it felt like that. The drawings were like so, <laughs> like drawn by kids. Yeah. When they say art is subjective, it really is subjective. It's so subjective, well, especially when it's that abstract art. Yeah. Because like, what everyone thinks like, what the hell? I could do that. And they did like Always Sunny did that. Yeah. In an episode where they get Charlie to paint stuff. <laughs> I think that is genius. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think once you get big enough, then abstract art is the way to go because then we can't, people can't judge you. Yeah, you just BS your way you out. You just of it. BS it because you have that credibility at this point, so you could just draw, draw whatever you want. People kind of like they will give their own insight into it. Like, you could be, you could just the guy, the original artist, could have drawn just nothing. Just, he could have just drawn like a stick man, and then some famous art appraiser will be like this. It's symbols <laughs> it is is a, a symbol of the dichotomy between man and his it, fantasy and it, his it, failings. It resembles so the stupid. simplicity of man, right? And it'll just be like dick butt or something. <laughs> <laughs> the symbol is the innocence of childhood. Or if you're just so good at drawing penises as a kid, and then you just make a painting who, who, of that. What's that from? Some who was that? Super bad. Super bad did have that. Yeah, Whereas a kid, he kept yeah, drawing he dicks. He so could stop drawing, drawing dicks. <laughs> but he's like big veiny motherfucker. That's how I like to draw. He couldn't stop. He had a lunchbox full of <laughs> dick drawings. Yeah, that was good. What's the actor's name again? Jonah Hill. Jonah, Jonah Hill. Yeah, I, that's something that I would believe if he said that's what his childhood really was like. <laughs> that he drew dicks. Yeah, that part's true. Stop. Actually, wait, it, was, it wasn't written by. It was written by. Uh, Seth what are those Rogan, guys? No, it was like Evan, that whole crew, Evan Goldberg, yeah. and uh, I think like his old. Yeah, they're all but it's together and like, like largely you know, based on their childhood or yeah. something, right? It's, I think something like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. You would know. I, Speaking of Jonah I, Hill, <laughs> what happened to those rumors that he was going to play the Penguin? I don't know. Did those fall through? No, I heard other rumors about Colin Farrell being involved, and uh, yeah, I heard that too. And uh, who else was it? There was another name tossed around. Uh, well, they had that Catwoman. Yeah, this for um, cast or Halle Halle Batman? No, yeah, it was Batman. um <laughs> Halle Berry. <laughs> I'll say Halle Berry was not. <laughs> it's someone something Kravitz. Zoe Zoe Kravitz. Zoe Kravitz. Oh, Lenny yeah, Kravitz. Lenny, is Lenny, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nephew. <laughs> Nephew. <laughs> Catwoman is going a different Cat direction. <laughs> Catboy. <laughs> there was a Simpsons joke about that, where uh, Principal Skinner was dressed as Catwoman. Oh yeah, <laughs> and he's in the like comic book convention or something, and someone asked him, "Why are you dressed as Catwoman?" And he, like, he has like boobs and everything, <laughs> and he's just like, "They told me it was Catman." <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, no, I didn't. No, <laughs> no, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> no one wants to see uh, Skinner in that outfit. <laughs> At least I don't. I don't think anyone does in real life. There probably is someone. <laughs> oh, definitely there's someone's done yeah. that. I bet there's been guys just as Halle Berry's Catwoman. That would be impressive if they did that. That would oh. still be gross. Jeez. Well, anyways. So, let's go on to the main topic we had today. Hmm. Concerning the poppy. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. <laughs> I, I don't even know where you're going. Oh, okay. Uh, Don Cherry. Oh, yeah. Oh, Okay. Yeah, he got canned. Yes. And people that don't know him, he's just like a he's just a host of uh, Coach's Corner for hockey sport on Sportsnet. Used to be Hockey Night in Canada. He's the commentator. Do you, wait, you don't know? He, I don't know? Do you know what he does? <laughs> I don't know what he does. What the fuck? <laughs> Is that wasn't this one you of your topics? <laughs> no, I didn't bring. You had, no, no, you had this list. Your topic? Oh, okay. Topic. Wait, what okay, the fuck was your bad. topic that's then? That's my bad. Playoffs. Oh, I just I didn't know. Well, you got that laid counts off. as a layoff, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it does. I didn't know the you got laid off. Layoff. Well, it's more of a firing, I suppose. <laughs> All right. Well, Dude, well, the, I don't know. Well, was it with cause? Why he got fired? Oh shit! You don't know. I have no he idea. Really doesn't know. <laughs> it's kind of a weak cause. Uh, yeah. But there is a reason, a main reason why. He made a comment on the air about uh, how these people was that this yeah. word? Yeah. yeah. These people not wearing poppies and stuff. So like immigrants and stuff not wearing poppies and he's saying how they should oh so you got cancel culture he, he was yeah, talking specifically about like the toronto mississauga area where he's from i think that's what yeah really well people off because it was he was talking specifically 
the thing about him he, he meant generally Canada wide as well but I, I don't know what he meant actually but it's just it's just it's like one of those standard uh like boomer things you'll hear from someone yeah right? uh but for with him it's because um I think they've had a history of him just saying shit and pissing people off Hassan stop making that noise, I'm not making that noise. <laughs> and then uh so then uh so yeah it was um yeah he had a history of saying shit and pissing people off so that's why i think at th- this point it was just uh sportsnet was just like you know what fuck it i think they they probably because he's 85 so i think they've been looking for a way to get like like they've probably been asking him to retire for a while well, he's pretty- yeah they're like holy shit he's still he hasn't retired yet <laughs> he's pretty holy bad at fuck. his job for like the last <laughs> decade or so yeah. He, does, he like never knows players names he's always, <laughs> always like this kid and he's like always referencing like the old days like Bobby Orr and yeah, stuff he, it's like man he's getting dementia as <laughs> you can see him watch him get dementia on the TV but he you know he, since he has been in the business for like so freaking long he's done a lot for like the actual culture of hockey yeah and NH- NHL at least and sorry you're gonna no, no. I was waiting for you to finish. Oh, I was gonna say he—he's always partnered with like Ron McLean, yeah. and I think he's like stepped up for him before when I think uh, they were gonna fire Ron for some reason. Uh, this could have been a long time ago, but and then he's like always defending him and stuff. But in this case, uh, they gave Don Cherry the chance to like apologize or something, but yeah. he didn't. And but Ron, Ron did. Ron apologized, yeah. Because yeah. so, when when the when the thing when he was saying that. Ron gave a thumbs up at the end of that, apparently, or something like that. Yeah, a lot of times, like you could just yeah, yeah, look. that's his thing, right? Yeah, it's a thumbs up to anything that Don Cherry says. Basically. He had to give his own, like, uh, yeah, his apology. Yeah, his little, his own personal struggle session or something like that. But Don's like always just talking like nonstop. He's like always ranting, yeah. and you just see you just see Ron, and he's just always just like staring at him, <laughs> and it's just like I wonder what's going through his head some of the times because a lot of stuff Don says is like not true or just stupid in general yeah he said way worse things before he said basically there was like a couple years ago he basically just said oh yeah russians you can never trust them like fuck right <laughs> right but and that was that was all like, oh, water on the bridge or something and then he, i think he said something about just whole groups they're all kinds of groups of people yeah he said something about i think the majority of people but, <laughs> probably yeah but my take on it he he, he did he fucked up because if he was just gonna say like, "Hey, you know, like uh, every Remembrance Day, everybody, you know, like it, it'd be a nice thing to do, just chip, chip in, like throw a couple bucks down, yeah. buy a poppy, you know, it's a nice thing to do, it's a nice gesture. Everybody should do it. More people should do it. Yeah. Right? No one would have a problem with that. No one would have a problem with a lot of things. Right. Yeah. But the way he said it was just basically when he said he he basically said, "You people that are coming to Canada." All you want, you're getting the milk and the honey and all that stuff, but you know you're not buying a poppy or whatever, yeah. right? But and that's the other thing. Like anybody who donates to the cause doesn't mean they have to wear the poppy, right? Yeah. Like lots of people donate but don't wear the poppy. Exactly. Yeah. I. Well, the poppy also falls off. It's yeah, just a needle. I, yeah. I I stopped wearing like the poppy like a because it keeps falling off. And then, yeah. They and really then got you just to the see pin. so many on the street and on the bus, yeah, and you're just it's stepping polluting. over them. Yeah. And, yeah. I think it's disrespectful if you're just walking over the. Pot. It causes, yeah, it does causes some problems because you just uh, at that point you he's making the distinction that if you don't wear a poppy, that makes you just Which automatically you just, disrespectful you of it. What? <laughs> oh, that's the print-on tattoos, you know, the stamp. Uh, oh, I thought I was like, are you, okay, clothes? you can tattoo yourself <laughs> on a poppy then. Fuck, man. They have the permanent needle, like not the permanent, like the, the pin, the, the pin. Yeah. Version, rather than. But the, it's not as common. It's not as common, but I mean, you can just buy it once and then just. Yeah, no, I did have actually. I made my own in a way, just because I had the small kind of flag pin before, yeah. and I used that on my poppy. But isn't it designed so that it. you would you're supposed to lose it, so you buy it for the next year? It doesn't. <laughs> you don't even really have to buy it because you could just take you, one. Really, you, no yeah. one's watching. Or it. you could just donate and not take one. Well, but, if I'm taking one, I might as well just take that donation box. <laughs> I'm as, well, I'm that big of a criminal. Yo, here's the thing: the donation, like, if you really think about it, it's not. Up, it's it's like these donations are a nice gesture. But you, like, if your veterans are living off of fucking the donations like this, it's uh, something's wrong, right? Yeah. The the country is supposed to take care of them first and foremost. When you when people go chip in and buy a poppy or whatever, it's a nice gesture, right? It shouldn't be fucking. That's the only thing available for fucking whatever veterans, right? Or 
uh, or like uh, memorial, I guess, institutions or whatever, right? The government is supposed to take care of all your veterans. You wear the poppy uh, if you choose to do so. It's just a, it's just something nice to do on Remembrance Day, right? He made it. It's a fucking big deal because he made it. It's just one of those boomer rages, but he's a public figure and he made it about like an us first them. And for his us was like everybody he considers Canadian is these people like they have to do what he thinks is right. In this case, it's wearing a poppy. Wearing the poppy yeah. It's kind of like the same argument where it's like, hey, it's like it's Christmas. It's the proper holiday. You got to call it Christmas. Not none of this happy holiday bullshit Xmas. It's like one of those boomer rants, right? Like other people not celebrate, uh, not not having Christmas as a big deal. He probably consider them not non-Canadian in this in this case he's like you know you're not being a good canadian if you're not wearing a poppy at this point he's making a distinction right he's already labeling people that if you don't wear a poppy you're not a good canadian in his eyes if you wear a poppy then you're accepted in his eyes right it's just fucking boomerangs yeah. so he fucked up <laughs> he did but they gave him a chance to either explain or apologize yeah. he and he doubled didn't. down on it he, yeah. he, he could have apologized i mean ron apologized all he would have all he he could have said the same thing like I wasn't whatever. He could have, but he's 85. He's well, getting that crazier <laughs> point. He yeah. Doesn't, yeah, he doesn't give a shit anymore, right? And he, he, to him, like, the thing is, he's not racist, right? He's not like, he doesn't have a problem if you're black, Asian, brown, whatever. Yeah. He does have a problem if you have, well, presumably, I'm giving yeah. him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I think he might be to a small extent. But he does have a problem, like I said before, I think in a really old episode, I'm like, what the fuck are Canadian values in the first place, right? Yeah. Like, like, he is imposed. He's basically saying, like, these are the values that are important to me, as Don Cherry. These are the values that are important to me. Mm-hmm. If you don't do them, you, in my eyes, you're basically shit. You're not. You're not Canadian. Well, yeah. He's basically making that distinction for you. Like, if you don't do the these things that I think are Canadian, you're not Canadian. He's making that call. Mm-hmm. Or, but that's completely fucked. That's not true because, that's- because a whole bunch of people from all the world come to Canada, right? You're gonna have. A massive difference between uh, some of these, not irreconcilable differences, but especially something as, as aesthetic as a poppy is. Some people just don't wear them, right? Yeah. And if you're talking about supporting veterans and stuff, just because w- immigrants, their grandfathers and stuff fought in the war too, and yeah. are on they fought on the good side too. Most of the uh, like. India and Pakistan, they were under um, British rule, so they were fighting in the Brit- British. Well, army. yeah, exactly, and then and then it's kind of like the same re- the same logic of the argument of you know if you don't fucking like it, if you don't do the stuff things that I think you should do, you should fucking get out. That's yeah. basically the logical end point of this argument, right? Like if you're not getting in, fucking get out, basically, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and and he's not saying it. But that's. But he said. It. <laughs> you no, know, he's not saying. I don't even think he realizes I, that's what the that's what the logical endpoint of what he's yeah. advocating is. He's not. He doesn't. He's not telling people to get the fuck out. No. But he's telling people like, if you're not doing this certain thing, like, then he's looking. He's looking down upon you. Or he doesn't think that you're doing the right thing. Be, be his his whole career has been based on talk first and think about it later. Yeah, he's a coach. So, I mean, and that's back what he then, did right? this time. And it kind of it backfired, and then he decided to double down on it. Yeah, it, well, he's just fails to realize that. Yo, yeah, you could you, when you're in a hockey game, you can fucking sh- yell all the shit you want, but if you're on a nationally broadcasted program, if you say shit that offends people, realize that it offends people for a certain reason, right? And it's not like it's not as something as uh as as just fucking shallow as a lot of this cancel sh- culture shit is out there, like. You can't stop people from, from taking like uh, issue with that, right? Yeah. There are people that took issue with that, and it's either you fucking, <laughs> you fucking own up to it, or <laughs> you're gonna have to, you're gonna get punished for it, right? Yeah. And this is a relatively so on the surface, this is like a relatively weak thing to be about, because honestly, it's such an easy fix. It's just like, yeah, I didn't mean you people, as in you know fucking immigrants or whatever. Maybe you know just fucking buy a poppy, right? That's what he'll say. Yeah. No one would have a problem. He said, "These people, they don't buy poppy. What the fuck are you guys doing?" Blah blah blah. blah. He d- he just took it like a f- just just a hair too far. <laughs> yeah, all. and you'll see his most uh, yeah, and it's if anything, this is gonna cause even more divide now, right? Like this this non this nothing that he just created out of thin air 
on I think even was it on Remembrance Day itself that this happened? No, I I think it was either that or the day before. It was like yeah, the Saturday. Fucking, you just before. created this new thing out of thin air that's gonna serve as this, this the next thing that makes people like fucking point fingers at each other and be yeah. like, You're a piece of shit, you're not doing this or you're a piece you're of not, shit, yeah. you're doing you're calling me whatever. You're not wearing a pop either. Yeah. Fuck you. So it's it's <laughs> Is you know what? They should just have a mandatory retirement age for people like that. Like, yeah. yo, man, Coach's Corner, you're 85. Just, you know, have fun. Retire. <laughs> Live off that pension. Yeah, you should have retired a long time ago. He even should've. like, even like Grandma was saying before, it's like when they first got to Canada, he was there. They rem- <laughs> yeah, they remember yeah. seeing him on TV. He lived long enough to see himself. Turning He's like a man. staple of Saturday nights, like, ho- like Hockey Night in Canada on. You well, it used to be on CBC. Yeah, that's a while. The same. They they yeah. moved on to Sportsnet, right? Yeah. It's the same format. It's just him and it, Ron McLean. Right. It's just two boomers going at it, right? And it's sometimes not even about hockey anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but here, the Sportsnet made that decision just out of business sense, right? Like, holy fuck, he did it again. He pissed yeah. off a bunch of people. So it's like, we keep him on. The pros are that he wears these really silly suits, and people like that. The cons are he will slip up and say shit that will get us in trouble. I bet he has a suit that's like just all poppies. <laughs> <laughs> he has some really bad suits. Would you think that would be a classy suit? <laughs> and to then wear he still wears a poppy on top of that too. <laughs> Guess which one's the real? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you want so that goes into layoffs. <laughs> what do you want to? What specifically about layoffs do you want to talk about? Oh, I was. <laughs> Thing of the etiquettes, like if your buddy gets laid off, well, how like who contacts who for lunches? Like, what? 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 Someone gets laid off at your priorities lunch? <laughs> <laughs> well, what would your priority be if someone gets laid off? Yeah, what, what would you your mean? priority be? Wait, Having gratitude that I have my job? So, oh yeah, for sure. I mean, but that happens instantly. Because you'd be like, oh, God, it's thank goodness it wasn't guilt me. Or like asking, hey, you, all, you well, okay? I'm just, or? I'm just wondering. Well, yeah, you would ask. You would you would feel, you would say sorry, um, things happened the way it did. But I was just curious, like, who con- like, do you contact the person to say, oh, I heard and sorry about that? Or do you wait for them to contact you? You know what? I, I think we shouldn't even tell you and just watch you. <laughs> experiment with this. Yeah, one. experiment. <laughs> well, this is the whole same problem I had with my neighbors where... When I bought my place, I wasn't sure if, if it's supposed to be the neighbors that welcomes me in this neighborhood or I go over to introduce myself. I think it's whoever takes initiative. <laughs> like, if you feel like it, you go over and say, and then, hey, I just moved in. I had this also this idea that, like, if they're renters, I wouldn't really introduce myself because I wouldn't. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, permanent. you said this a couple yeah. times already. It was alongside with the lawnmower talk. I think the rule of thumb is if you're not sure... Probably do nothing. <laughs> I've never even seen anyone put in that effort to like what? say hi to new. But then, if you need a bottle of sugar, how are you supposed to? Do Why don't that? you just buy I just sugar? Go buy that all sugar. on TV. I think, I think in your really case, <laughs> I think in your case, they're still socially deficient in some areas. You should just buy your own sugar so you don't have to interact with your neighbor for this. So I didn't. So that's the thing. I don't bake that much, and so so why sometimes you... it just makes sense to just ask to borrow sugar. But the thing is. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Why would it? I, okay, so like one day when you decide, hey, I want to use sugar. I need to make something that uses sugar. Yeah. Regardless. He of- has a new neighbor, so he goes over <laughs> and it's like, hey, first off, are you renting or do yeah, you, you own? Know how- <laughs> wait, why, don't, why don't you just go to fucking the market and just buy sugar and just have sugar on hand? I mean, just sugar the- doesn't go bad. So even if you buy like a kilo and just have it at home. You could find for you like, can keep it for a long time. You could keep it a long time, yeah. I mean, True. I mean, seeing as uh, you're so confused about how I to enter- say pound as well for our American <laughs> listeners. Is that, yeah, there's, okay, not, there's like one, one guy. It's also for our UK. UK. He can he can make he, they can make the conversion. Who gives a shit? <laughs> a bag of sugar. <laughs> yeah, but they don't want to. They don't want to like pull up their iPhone. And they're you know what? They're that serious conversion. They're sure, it's not that expensive either. So. You could buy a small bag. Actually, I didn't realize uh, Siri when I when you set it up, it's voice recognition. Wait, first let's go back to the sugar for a second. So we agree that you're fucking. No, no, the, the original point, the layoffs. Who would talk to? Oh you? my god! Yeah, that <laughs> okay. was the original point. <laughs> that was the original sugar. All right, let's let's put a... We are so deep in this inception. Hold on, hold on. Let's 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 just let's just cap the sugar thing first. Then. Right. 
So you know what you have to do now, right? Just buy sugar. Then I have to buy sugar bowl. Yeah, buy what? sugar. For whatever. Just well, you need a container for the sugar. You can't just buy sugar. Just put it in a, just put it in a Tupperware. Tupperware, yeah. Oh. But then I have to buy a label maker. What? what? You see, there's a, this problem. Well, then how would I know? Oh, are you going to confuse it with You can open the Tupperware. <laughs> <laughs> this, this Tupperware is It's okay. not it's hard to tell sugar. what's in the Tupperware you container. All right, so you know, you know what to do label. now? I feel like sugar is not the answer because it it like whirlwinds into other items I need to buy. And as does a, it really, though? As a, you know, I want to be a minimalist. I don't want to but buy But does it really? Why don't you just buy sugar and just leave it on your counter? But you should... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what? Like, why? Why did you just do that? I tried that. And how about you be the nice guy and just buy a kilo of sugar, use whatever you need, and then go donate the sugar to your neighbor. Just be like, hey, I have extra yeah, sugar. Just donate to yeah, just donate the batteries. They won't be suspicious at all. <laughs> but you, yeah, you, okay, so that's right. it's after Halloween. Why is this guy donating sugar? <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you out candy. Yo, can you keep yeah. this at your house for a bit? I promise well, it won't be long. It's impossible for him to keep extra sugar at home. I just, That's what I'm saying. It's not that it's not it's not impossible. I just it's need just this out of my house right now. <laughs> I feel like I wanted to buy extra items to store the sugar. Why? Like but literally like a sugar you bowl have, or a you have a Tupperware maker. container. Yeah, I do. I'm yeah, pretty use sure you one can of just those buy and you're good. In today's day and age you can probably buy a pack of sugar that's resealable. I'm just, I just oh, like, you're right. I, I just like how those. much of a how how much of a dilemma this is for you. <laughs> If it's not an item I use a lot, it becomes a dilemma, yeah. Holy shit. Like, I was looking at um, immersion blenders, and then I was evaluating how much soup I would make in the future, and then looking at the cost, and... Um, have you watched a show called The Good Place? The Good Place? Uh, no, but I've uh, watched a video that talks about it, and I heard that the you newest watch season... You that show. One of the guys you'd relate with him, one of the characters... Is it I the Asian think... guy? Ted Danson? No. The gay Asian? <laughs> no. Is he gay? I didn't know no, he was no, no. gay. I'm not even sure if you're gay. (laughs) No, the Asian. Oh, not the Asian. Asian. Not the Asian. Okay. Is it Ted Danson? It's not Ted Danson. Oh, because he's the only guy. Oh, is he the black guy? Huh? The black guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I can see that. If you, you should watch it. You'd. I've seen. I've seen the first couple episodes. I didn't get into it. It takes a long time before they get into the morals. The morality Actually, pretty part. much every episode has some kind of morality. Morality, yeah. Because like I heard the third season was interesting because it's like, it's impossible to be good. Because there's just so many rules and stuff. Yeah. And that eventually everyone just goes to the bad place. But even the first one is good. First season is pretty good, too. You just have to get into it. The first couple couple episodes are kind of slow. Like, I I, I gave um, Elsa. Was Elsa? What is this? What show is this? Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell. Bell. Not Elsa. (laughs) Not Elsa. It's a good place. It's about people. Like, it's it's a story about going to heaven. Anyways. And trying to stay in heaven. The main character, she... she, But she's a bitch. And she thought she was, like... She she had to hide to pretend to be good, but then she f- starts finding out secrets, like they weren't in heaven, they weren't actually in hell, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh, I see. I've never seen the show either. It's, either. it's actually pretty good. Um, and it's comedy. It's, it's not a big commitment either. There's only uh, three seasons out so far. Eight Four, episodes each. The fourth one's airing right now, and that's the final season. And each season is thirteen episodes, and it's a sitcom, so each episode it's like a thirty minutes. minutes. They just yeah. got like a free it, plug it from us. You can enjoy this all on Netflix. Oh my actually, god! Look all these the plugs. Wonderful Look at all these unsolicited. Well, it's actually on NBC, but Netflix also has it. I'm yes, scared. NBC, where you can catch such good programming. What else do they I have nowadays? I think it's NBC. You know, NBC, I don't even know any they have really good shows. YouTube uh, They segments. used to have thirty. NBC rock. has uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine now. That's a good show. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Brooklyn Nine Nine is good. It's probably what I'm people's favorite show Bonnie. nowadays. But uh, just going back to Siri, because I didn't realize, because uh, it was wait, voice can recognition. Can we go back to Let's layoffs? Go back to the layoffs. <laughs> wait, 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 I just want to finish Siri. Okay, it'll be fine, quick. It'll be fine. quick. But I didn't realize it was voice recognized, so my partner kept saying, hey, Siri, and I thought it was the way she said Siri. We just kept trying, and then I realized I was voice recognized. And that's why she couldn't activate my Siri by saying, hey, Siri. Okay, back to layoffs. <laughs> back to layoffs. <laughs> The etiquette surrounding layoffs, actually, specifically. <laughs> so your specifically. question is mainly who should contact the other after one of them has the been laid off. The layoffee or the friend of the layoffee? I feel like, you know what, I feel like psychi- psychiatrists or psychologists, they should listen to some of well, these you episodes don't know. Just, to, just to analyze you. I think they would be so fascinating for them. But, like, when you get laid off, don't you sign an agreement, like, something about, like, you can't... That you can't say you got laid off? No. Well, what? there's, like, a... It's kind of like a... Yeah, like a thing that you, like a NBA silence agreement kind of, kind of. If yeah, you, like the MCA or something. Well, if you, 
I think it's mostly just it has to do with your work related stuff. So if you're like a sales guy, you can't take your clients and shit with you. Yeah, you there's that. Yeah. And there's that. Um, it's not like you can't talk to your coworkers, your friends and shit that were that you work with. Yeah. They can't yeah. enforce that. It's, do you, basically, do you, you're signing that you're not going to tell company secrets to like the, the next place you get hired. Yeah. Well, yeah, you can't. Yeah. Like I realize that when you get laid off, they don't really tell you why. And so people sometimes are shocked when they're laid off. Of course. And yeah. If I told you why, <laughs> then you'd be a person and then they have to deal with you like a person. Yeah. If I mean, they lay you off, weapon. you're just a number. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. And then HR it seems like a weapon. They just send this drone called HR to come to your office and give you an envelope. It's the process is very sanding. Yeah. Uh, it's almost sanding as like putting down your animal. I heard like it's like a needle that goes in and then they just breathe and then they stop breathing. It's just like it's an instant thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they do. Yeah. <laughs> it's not dramatic or off. anything. It's, but, okay, it's back, just like back that. Back to the original question. Fuck who sakes. Who calls who? <laughs> it's your question. So if some dude, yeah, that's my person question. A gets laid off, should person A call his buddies and say, hey, I got laid off? Or should his buddies call him and be like, Sorry, dude. I heard you got laid off. That was your original question. Yeah, that's my original question. Yeah. So, what would you do? In uh, either well, case? I think Zinzin has it right. I would just not do anything until I know. <laughs> Spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was for fucking borrowing sugar from your neighbor, buddy. I never said no, no, don't no, talk was, to your friends. That was until actually we're greeting a new neighbor. Let's, let's, oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, for greeting a neighbor, yeah, that's fucking just don't even deal with it. If it's your friend, oh, let's switch it around. Another devastating thing in somebody if somebody's family member dies, would you wait for your your friend's family member dies? Would you wait for him to call to tell you or would you call and give your condolences right? As something soon as something possible? bad happens to your friend. That's basically it. Yeah. You get laid yeah, off, right, right. there's a funeral. What do you do? Well, okay, well in this layout part Okay, not not that they're your friend, but they're your coworker. That's that's okay. more where the complication. But coworker from. enough that you Talk communicate on outside of basis, outside work. work. Yeah, right. correct. So that's, so that's where that's a work where friend, right? A work friend, yeah, or friend work. No work friend. <laughs> <laughs> friend work. That sounds like a command. <laughs> Wait, did your girlfriend know you're fucked up? <laughs> 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 I don't know how he could hide it. <laughs> Wait, yeah, did, no, did you no. ask her like these related questions, and uh, did you get a chance to? She just... was gonna ask Siri what's wrong with him, but she couldn't unlock it. Did you have any moments where she was just like, where she just you say something and she looks at you and she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I don't think I brought this up. You know, okay. Not in this context. You should ask her. This would be a fucking doozy. He saves Have his you... messed up questions for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need I need your uh, guys' specialty. That's our specialty. The, to, to, I don't think to we talk have any through. specialty. Well, I shall probably find out when he has to go to the neighbors for sugar. <laughs> yeah, oh, someone new moves in and he, she just sees him panicking like, uh, <laughs> what do I do? Uh, uh, <laughs> he's sweating all over. He's like, what, what, what's wrong? Like, I don't know if the neighbor's a tenant or the, the owner. <laughs> well, now I have to do research again. Got to <laughs> go to the property and look up the land title. <laughs> Is that what you do on your... To see if well, they're renting is, or this owning. Is, this is back... Yeah, we've mentioned this. Yeah. Zin Zin was saying, how would you know? And I would say, you would look at the land type. So that's what you would do. Yeah, but then you'd also have to find out their, the person's name. <laughs> yeah. So, right. just be like, oh, so this, this is this <laughs> this is what you're saying. You got a new neighbor that moves in. Let's say you have to borrow sugar from him. And you're like, fuck. I don't know if he owns the property or he's renting. Yeah, First thing that's... I'm going to do, I'm going to head over to the registry. And I'm going to order a land title. Just just to see if he if he owns the if he owns his place. Only till then, only after I get the land title and I can verify, then I will go borrow. Don't sugar you have to pay this. for the land title? Six yeah, to eight weeks do. later, so he will buy a have fifty percent chance get a cup bucks. of sugar. <laughs> this is what you want to do. <laughs> this is your course of action. This would be yeah, that's would be my course of action. Well, it's not cheaper than sugar. Right, because when you buy sugar, as I mentioned, you don't have to buy a container for your sugar, <laughs> and then it like it no. windmills down. Oh, yeah, because the containers we're saying you anywhere. don't have to buy a, a container. To two million dollars, right? You have containers. Well, Already. I mean, if you purchase so, anything, there's always something you have to buy for that thing. Like for example, you buy skis. 
now you have to buy things to maintain those skis, yes, like wax. S- Holy skis shit! I and actually sugar are completely different things. I actually have a I actually have a solution for you, but I almost feel like I shouldn't say this because it's almost like I feel like that guy that developed a nuclear bomb and then after that he just regretted it, <laughs> bringing this into existence. I have a solution for you, but I just don't want to say it. I think the solution it. is to rent. Like no, when I went skiing, I just rent because I didn't even, want to. No, buy. just about the no, sugar thing. Just about, just about the, the sugar. sugar. Just about the sugar. I almost don't want to tell you about it though, because it's so. Actually, the it one, feels so dirty. I bought one sugar and I regretted it. You bought it one brown sugar. sugar? Yep, mm-hmm. just one grain. Brown sugar. <laughs> just one grain. One grain of sugar, please. That's why you regretted it, man. You got no, no. It so I bought brown sugar. So it probably clumped on him. They clumped and hardened, yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to use. But I read that you can. You don't need to buy brown sugars. What uh, the better thing to buy is molasses and white refined sugar. Mm-hmm. Because if you mix those together, but then you're buying becomes, two but things. Then now you're buying two things, and right. I need two separate containers. <laughs> but it's better than buying brown sugar, which clumps and rots. You know, you get well, a smaller you, you bag of brown sugar. No, you can't find smaller bags. bags. Yeah, there are. So. Are there? Yeah. Baking size brown sugar, like there's like a bag this big. Like, dude, you you can tiny. get like a hundred grams of sugar if you wanted. That's it. You know, the other thing I was thinking about. No, before you go to the other thing, I'm just gonna. You know what? I'll just unleash this. You know what you can do? You don't have to buy sugar. You can just fucking go to like fucking mcdonald's nw wherever and just take the fucking packets of sugar i was thinking that too <laughs> i just you could but I, I i didn't want to say this because i'm unleashing you to do this on like as a mass activity <laughs> yeah, now you, just I go into your local nw you might, become a, no sugar? you might become a problem <laughs> for, for the local uh, Man, establishments just, that'd now. be so much work you have to rip every tiny bag empty it just out just buy it just buy like a coffee at timmy's and be like can i get 50 packets of sugar too <laughs> well i mean like if you really wanted to not just fucking not buy sugar and just only get minuscule amounts then you can just fucking do that you don't have to unleash yourself on your neighbor Dude, and I totally, make him suffer I totally this. understand the minimalist uh, aspect to life and I would love to do it I'm t- trying but it's very hard I don't think I like you can stuff ca- too much I don't I, think you can call him no but, but really no that's, that's <laughs> no, in like, a way he is but in, like, in a really twisted way like I'm not uh, not that hardcore but like no, but, I, I do subscribe to the principle Right, and even if you subscribe to the principle, you'd still have to understand that there are some necessities that you need. Oh, like that's sugar. but that is part of the principle. Like, how, of how, how do you buy your milk? Like, how do you but, buy okay, I don't, I don't drink milk. Let me in, in this in that. Let's go to the previous scenario. How, what is minimalist about neighbor moving in? You're not sure if he's, a, if he's a tenant or owner, and you have to go to the land title office to to confirm if he's uh, either renting. Well, it all or goes back to I need sugar. Yeah, so like how what what part of that is minimalist? <laughs> Wouldn't this go back to if you should greet them or not? Yeah. Right. Instead of Forget greeting about them, the sugar. Forget about the sugar. Like the Forget most minimalist sugar. thing would be either to not greet them or greet them. I think this will be like the most I the think exact opposite of minimalism. There are advantages of greeting them because when you greet them, they're more likely to help you out in the future. So for example, if you need a lawnmower to <laughs> mow a lawn. Oh god. <laughs> We're going to spiral into this is like a greatest hits kind of episode. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it <laughs> doesn't have to be yeah. It doesn't have to be a transaction like that, you know? You can be, sometimes people are just good or nice for the sake of being But nice. I I often ask this question and most most comments I get is people don't talk to their neighbors. Yeah, yeah. you can just I not do that. But our mayor talks about, you know, greet yourself, talk to your neighbors, help out. Yeah, it's just to be like building the community, but, but I yeah. really don't care. No, well, and, uh, I think what he means is like neighbors in the general sense. It doesn't mean you're right next door neighbor. But say, <laughs> say <laughs> for like 10, ho- 10 houses <laughs> down, someone's car is stuck in the snow. You can walk over and help yeah. them get it out or something. You can just, I, I, I can that's, just a, that's a far walk. I can just imagine you're just doing the calculations in your head as you watch your neighbor struggling to to try to get his car moving from the fuck like, does he ditch? qualify as a neighbor his house is 13 houses down <laughs> he's calculating all the hours he can he can milk from like lawn mowing and shit from his neighbor per push this, I, I do think when you graduate from being a you know living under your mom's basement to a homeowner you, you do take on a lot of these problems they're not they're not problems, problems. <laughs> Challenges, I, sorry. I am one of them. not even challenges. <laughs> a lot of them are easy to solve if you do consider a challenge or a problem. It's like, it's almost as if, like, when I take a shit, I have this dilemma. I don't know whether to take my pants fully off or just to take them down to my ankles. This, this well, is a hard question. In Rooster Teeth, they did have this question, like, whether you stand up and wipe your butt or oh, you yeah, sit down and wipe your butt. Oh, and apparently, people are very divided. But they don't, and they're disgusted on the other side. That does the other way. 
I don't. What did they say? What, what, what was better? Well, they were saying. Well, they were divided. I think half mm. the cast was standing up. Fuck! I imagine sitting most up. sitting. Yeah, I imagine you most sit down. You no, I think a few Rooster said. Teeth. It was most. I think Barbara stood. Yeah, Barbara was the only one. One of four. So I don't know who else stood, but I remember it was pretty divided as well. You would actually. Uh, I think to get, be the most clean. You. It's better to wipe when you're sitting down. I think you don't. Well, no, there's there's a, again, there, no. well, for the people who are standing, they think that there's a misconception that your hand will touch the water, and that's how it'd be gross, and that's why they stand. Really? Yeah. Well, that's a misconception, then, right? Like, th- but you, but when you stand up and your butt cheeks clench you back together, that's gonna still. That's yeah, gonna, exactly. You, you still what, bend. You're not like standing up. Sh- <laughs> yeah, you're not standing up straight. <laughs> you like bend over and wipe. I feel like we. But you still. Right but you, yeah, but you still gotta. You gotta get up, right? You already. Yeah, you gotta get up. Some of it, if you had really liquidy shit, some of it can conceivably start dripping. Oh, dripping down. down. Let's go back to. But you're hoping I don't want to talk you would hope it drips down. You're not getting up so much that the angle changes, and that when it drips down, it'll miss the toilet bowl. Right? Well, the less you bend, I mean, the less you stand up, the more cleaner it'd be. Right. Right. So, but you also sitting want sitting would be the best position. Then. But the reason they're standing is because they're afraid to put their hand in the water. Well, I know, but that's that's only it. It's just it's just like a habit. But I think the that's f- that's all. It they also have becomes for them. a habit too. That's yeah. all they have for them. Right? Because because as um, I guess when do you learn how to wipe your butt to either do sitting or standing? Like, is that something just you get just get a fucking you just, bidet and you're good? I, I have one. You still have to wipe one. Spray. You still have to wipe. Right? Yeah, but it's more. It's, it's less light. shit yes. and more water. Yeah. You say you have one. Oh, just nice. an attachable one from attachable. like Amazon. Oh, yeah, you just I see. attach it to your own toilet, not like a full-on bidet toilet. Fuck oh, okay. What so brought you... about this upon? What brought this upon us again? What was it? You got to make a mind map sometimes for or for podcast. For you, for you, for I you. have to make a mind map. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. You suddenly brought up rooster teeth. We went for sugar to but shit. I, I brought up. I brought up. Oh, this is be. just this is like a dilemma. Just like we we're on whether neighbors. you should fully take your pants off to. Fully. It was something about neighbors. I think there was this guy uh, named Tech Lead, and he talks about what to do when you want to quit a company. Yeah. Like you know, we we learn about the standard. Like you put in your two weeks and da da da. But he has an entirely different version I of think it. You mentioned something like this before. Uh, no, you may have seen the video. But his idea is that you take vacation, all your vacation, and then once you're done your vacation, you that's when you just quit. And you don't give them the two weeks. Because a lot of times, I think because he works in the tech industry, a lot of tech industry don't want you to work those two weeks because you're, you have a lot of uh, access to private information anyways. Mm-hmm. So they just want to let you go anyways. Yeah. So most times, and because of that, it's probably better to just take up all your vacation and then use it. Because you don't know if they pay all your vacation, if you, have, if you accrued any hours. Uh, the other thing he talks about is uh, timing it on the vesting period of your investments. Like say you buy stocks of your company, then there's a timing of that window. So because if you quit too early and it's not past that vesting period, you might lose all the shares that you have purchased. Um, and it's, it's a, it seems very cold and hard, but in reality, it seems like it's almost as fair as how companies treat well, employees yeah. when they let us go, that they just, they don't give you a warning and it's just like chop. And then it's like, here's your time. It goes both ways. It like, goes both it, ways. It, yeah. And it should, uh, with the, I mean, maybe 30 or 40 years ago, there was a, such a thing as loyalty to the company and loyalty to the employee. But these days it's just a transaction. You are doing work for them and then once they're done with you they're done with you and if you're done with them then you're done with them pretty much pretty much <laughs> i'm just loyal to the extent that i'm like i just want to keep my job yeah but i that's a dilemma to me because i'm not sure like because i like my company and i don't know i'm right. not sure like it, it's smarter to do the way he talks about rather than you know doing the two weeks thing because well, they could totally screw you if you do give me your two weeks right? yeah i'm just saying unless you do know that you get paid out vacation right because if you need the money, then that might be a better choice to actually work. Yeah, exactly. And this all depends on the mindset of the person, too, as well as the company. Like, some people want to, like, uh, you know, have tenure at a company. Like, most people go, or some people go in going, you know, I'll work for a year, and that's just how they are. They'll work for a year, and then they start looking for something else. Yeah. And some people want to stay there. On HR, they'll lie. They'll lie their teeth saying, oh, yeah, I'm so going to be here long term. I see my vision here. Right. And then, and then, the, then some just people gone. who actually say that mean that. Like, they want to be there. They want to have seniority or, they yeah. wanna, you know, move up in that same. That's especially true company. of all, a lot of these, like, it's almost like legacy jobs. Like you said, back then, uh, you you had people working, like, usually factory jobs. Yeah. Most jobs, 
they'd have like a union as well where they would uh, prize seniority and stuff like that. Then people would basically work almost their entire lives in one place. And it's like company loyalty, like you said. Yeah. And then if you look at uh, most tech companies nowadays, There's a lot no of them, you know, well, it's, it's not even designed to have loyalty almost. They're almost all saying, contract. well, a lot of people are almost saying like, unless you're like, even if you are a startup or even if you work for a bigger company, it's almost as if your value goes into uh, the less, almost the less time you spend at a company, the more valuable you are. Yeah. The yeah, more, some ways, yeah. the more versatile you look. Sort of. Yeah. Like, there's like a set amount of period, like maybe you spend maybe two, three years, four years. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people, it's almost like a culture, or maybe a lot of com- some some of them even value like oh, and then you're looking for something new after yeah. that. Mo- most yeah. for tech companies, I would say like even two or three years is pushing it. Most people are like, it's more like a contract slash project kind of yeah. role. Like you're hired on for this project, and then after that, you know, there's no guarantees. You know. Yeah, and, especially. And, yeah. Especially for those startups that you find in like uh, the Bay Area and stuff, it exists almost as a culture where someone that's hiring another person, they might be like, oh, why'd you spend so much time at this whatever company? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like companies should have incentives to try to keep workers longer. You well, know? but then if they have to keep workers longer, then they have to treat them with that seniority it's, aspect. No, no, right. But I feel like companies should get uh, a bonus to incentivize them to do that rather than uh, incentivize them to hire contractors, right? Because there's more incentive for companies to hire contractors because, you know, you don't have to pay them benefits. You don't have to pay them yeah. a lot of different things. Yeah. And it saves them a lot of money. Whereas if you can incentivize them, then it'd be better for them to try to keep people longer. Well, yeah. The, well, yeah. And, and they're not looking in the business to fucking uh, basically have like a long-term employee anymore. They A lot of them... Especially the older ones, the way they're structured, they just can't. They can't afford that shit. They can't, right? Like especially in America, when you have to pay for benefits like insurance, so, it's too what, expensive. Well, too what they're doing is, yeah, like the, they're focused on maximizing profit. If one of them is just to cut, just to cut the compensation for employees. But then by doing that, you're adding stress to the government because these people. They're gonna once they lose their their yeah, contract is up. They're just gonna apply for an EI or yeah, no, some type of they don't give a shit. <laughs> they, they don't, don't give a, a shit about that. that. No, I know the companies don't, but the governments do. And yeah. I'm, what I'm trying to say is that the government can use their fund the resources to incentivize companies to keep their employees longer. But then, then that don't... way they don't need to focus on dude. Yeah, if they're incentivizing companies. It's still money out of the government. Look, man, they the they, they too. have to monitor that. This was doing that. this was this is one of the things that. This is one of like the one of the older arguments, at least in this country, was like, oh, maybe the government should fucking they should do more in regards to this. But in reality, they can't because a lot of their hands are tied, and there's a lot of vested interest that goes against this. The right? only way the government could do anything is if everything is state owned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> almost. But the government that uh, we uh, can the Canadian government is is very inept at <laughs> running. I things. guess the other way is the UBI, man. Gotta wait for that sweet, sweet universal basic income. Yeah, but they don't want to implement it. Or Just revolution. for the same reasons. Yeah, revolution. <laughs> <laughs> or revolution. Yo, I'm down for revolution. The West it? What's it? No, that's not a revolution. That's that's not- that's- <laughs> we missed that's, it, though. That's, that's a dance party. They did a, they did a rally. Full, full score 20 years ago, it all started in the... <laughs> what I, was was I was talking about I, I don't know I don't know where you're getting at the, what the was name it? of the Doogie Boogie the, uh, Dance Hall Boogie thing. Dance Hall yeah, oh, yeah. Like, Scootin' Boogie Scootin Dance Hall boogie, yeah. yeah imagine if that yeah yeah we, we, I was talking to you yeah. about that and I was like fuck imagine if Alberta actually seceded and this was the historical moment when they made the the, the Scootin' Boogie Dance Hall declaration <laughs> <laughs> that place would be like a shrine to the memorial yeah, yeah. yeah historic landmark that's the term I was looking for <laughs> this is when we started on our path of independence <laughs> and then the people fled the boogie dance and hall boot scootin boogie dance hall. boot scootin <laughs> please don't let this happen I don't want to live yeah, in this time no, I would move <laughs> where would you move to? I have no idea that BC like maybe BC, but then that probably. might Dude. kill me that might destroy me even worse. You destroy I heard head. like in BC they were thinking of getting rid of time, um, daylight savings. Yeah, I heard that. Well, oh, it's not and just in BC. I think they want to get rid of it. 
No, I the province. The province. The province. BC's. There are parts of BC that has given it, but yeah. the whole province. But it'd be I interesting. Thought, I thought the whole country was actually talking about something like that. Yeah, I remember hearing this a few time. years ago, and nothing happened. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always a talk. Every, every year. You it always hear about and it. And then it, nothing happens. You hear it at least twice a year because they like seven happens yeah. twice a year. But like, it'd be interesting if, say, the province of BC does it. Because Alberta would follow it for now. And then Saskatchewan doesn't. So then Alberta would be the only one. Saskatchewan in, already does it. No, it does not. Or, or does it follow doesn't it. follow daylight savings. Yeah. So BC doesn't follow it. Yeah. Then Alberta would be in the middle. middle yeah. And it'd be kind of weird. Oh, that would be so fucking stupid. <laughs> just all just for... What was the original purpose of it? Well, it saves money. It's it a was, lot of cost savings. Daylight like savings is the original purpose. Is that purpose. the original purpose? Was, no, it was, far, it was, it was for farming. farming things. Yeah. Yeah. It could be for farming too. Well, yeah. Right now, our sun sets at like three to Not four or something. They were trying to, it's yeah. kind of that sucks when daylight like saving switches and then you're like driving home from work and you're like, it's so dark now. So it's there's no sad. point to do it nowadays. Cause no, because there's no... Like, we don't live by the sunlight. We all live yeah. by our phones. Yeah. And the I don't even like see it. sunlight anymore. There's no point. <laughs> Leave yeah. work, sun's not up. Go home, sun's not up. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty brutal. If I was a plant, I'd be dead. If yeah, you were a plant, you'd, you'd be dead. Yeah, yeah, he would get you know no sunlight. Generally, you need sun. Generally, if yeah, you were yeah. a plant <laughs> working at a nine to five job <laughs> thing and not seeing the sun, did you know that uh, <laughs> plants need to rest, so it's not efficient to give it sunlight all the time? Did we know that? Yeah. No, I did not know that. So they were growing. <laughs> How do you give it sunlight all the time? Well, they were that <laughs> in the Japan of sunlight. It can only be. Wait, wait. Available, so, so plants out there in the the fucking the, just out there in the wild and shit, they're wild getting plants. wrecked by the sun. Is that what you're telling me? Like they're not getting any breaks. From no, the they sun. found this in uh, I think it's Kobe in Japan where they have a bunker where they're growing lettuce without soil. Uh huh. So they use sponges. So they stick the seeds in sponges and then they soak it in water. Mm-hmm. And they found that they were experimenting different wavelengths of light to see what plants like better or what helps it grow faster. And they also found that you can't expose them to sun all the time, that they need rest periods. So they were exposed it for four hours, rested for four. Or I don't know exactly the schedule, but they found that 24 hours of sunlight was not good for them. Well, that's why in nature we don't have sunlight for 24 hours. <laughs> But we do yeah, in some places. areas we do though in no, Arctic in the Arctic, Arctic how much plant life is in Arctic? <laughs> get the freaking tundra how much pr- plant life is in Arctic well do you count the bunker of seeds that we have that's where we keep but all that's our... just seeds that's not plants oh, we can't oh what if that one day that bunker gets you know no dude we're talking Wait, about that's plants that's in the yeah. wild <laughs> yeah they're in the wild Oh, you're talking about seeds. So in you're, a bunker, you're talking about seeds you? in a bunker that are storage. Like which, what part of the bunker is part of nat- part of nature? <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess what you could do is if you bought a plant from IKEA, travel to the Arctic, pot it there. That's nothing to do with nature. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just you're, doing you're, your own experiment. You're meddling with nature there. Yeah. That's not nature. Yeah, it yeah. would be. Uh, introducing an invasive species. Yeah. yeah well, you, it's okay. Yeah. Well, if it actually lives, it'd be an invasive species. Yeah. 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 But you don't know. You don't well, know. what plants are you gonna bring to grow in the uh, in the Arctic? Uh, maybe a fern. This might surprise you, a but fern. <laughs> a lot of plants they won't be able to survive the Arctic. Well, let's see when global war. Well, <laughs> we'll see what what climate change does. It's changing the world already, right? Like uh, Australia is becoming a firestorm. Have you heard? Yeah, no, I haven't heard that specific they're, story. Um, they're having trouble with fire right now because they're living in the dry season. They're really droughts and there's high winds. And... California has almost the same problems every year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, I mean, even California, they're also putting the blame that we're in the climate change era and uh-huh. that the world is changing. And you saw politicians saying, no, we have fires back in the day. This ain't no, nothing new. And... <laughs> Arnold didn't say that, though. Arnold was saying how, like, it... They're used, or uh, they didn't used to get as much fires as they do now, and like, now it seems like an yeah, annual thing. We, like, we know that Arnold's a, Arnold's a Terminator. Ar- Arnold's not the a future. the governor. Arnold's not the governor now. Yeah, so. he's not anymore. No. So he's, he's got nothing to lose. I mean, he second. he was in that really terrible movie, Terminator, the recent one. All right, let's stick okay. to the. So wait, what 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 else do you want to say about Australia? It's more about climate change, I guess. Oh, okay. Still have to deny, I heard there, but Australia the burns that. a lot of coal under. Um, failing the Paris Agreement. Like, they're not really uh, keeping, um, what do you call it, their quota, I guess. They're kind of falling down. Yeah, yeah. But it seems like 
it seems like to be on top of the economic world, you have to cheat in some way, right? So what do you mean? Like for for China and India, for them to grow as rapidly as they can, they kind of have to cheat in terms of polluting or. Well, that was the. Uh, the you know, like uh, the kind of agreements they came to in the Paris Accord. Yeah, I understand that for them, they're the developing ones, so they have a yeah. bigger allowance. I totally get that. Well, I'm just saying in general, like for example, like Facebook and like um, Google or uh, YouTube, the way they got big is because they kind of cheated copyright, right? They didn't really, they kind of infringe a copyright, like when people were able to upload whatever they want and stuff. So then that's how they got that space. But then. Once they grew to a really big company, then they started uh, shocking or uh, what do you call it? hammering down on copyright. Yeah, but it's a, <laughs> that's not like that's not like the main competitive edge they had over all the other video streaming services. But I mean, like it that was okay. Well, I'm, back in the day, like for YouTube to become as big as it was, it it did cheat a lot back in the day. Like a lot of copyright content was ported there. Like a lot of people watch. Like music video is a big one, right? No well, one watched music no, video. Well, on TV. you can still on lots of sites. No, 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 no. It's just YouTube was like the format and the quality. Yeah, was, it wasn't just cover. You can fucking find entire episodes of a lot of shows, even just on Daily Motion and shit. True. Yeah. Right. So that's probably not the reason they became so successful. If you because like, obviously, you because you could just prove it wrong. Like, oh, Daily Motion, I can find a whole fucking episode of whatever YouTube. I can't. For a, They're more for a period of Daily. time, I suppose. Well, Bye. it's much longer. Whenever I, right now, YouTube is super, super cracky downy on. Uh, They're very cracky downy, right? Yeah. So obviously, it's not the copyright thing. I thought it was kind of cool because they have this um, AI that can tell um, pornography versus not pornography. Like basically, orig- originally they had an AI that detects if something is nude or not. So now but- we have computers watching porn. Oh, no. yeah, on, like, because what people, if our videos get taken down? But because people <laughs> upload porn on YouTube all the time. So you need algorithm to scan it, right? But then the problem is, how do you know if it's porn or a Victoria's Secret bikini shoot, right? Well, that they, they keep them on. Right? Yeah, they keep those on, yeah. right. And the algorithm figures it out. Like It's, it, mostly if it's you, pretty smart. It's, I think it's a combination of algorithm and also uh, they Human? have humans, yeah. yeah. They Maybe. I don't know it's, how much humans they can have that... It was like looks at him like is this porn? Porn mm-hmm. auditor Let me watch for it YouTube. For a bit it was only here. recently uh, I recall like an AI couldn't determine the difference between like a dog and spaghetti or something. <laughs> <laughs> but also it's funny because um, computers also sometimes have biases. Oh, and also it's not just people; it's also people that reports the videos as well. They, Nart, they uh, rely a lot they on help. that as they well. Do, yeah, they do help because yeah, that, narcs. that fines tune the algorithm. But it was funny too because they talk about. Um, there was a community in the education culture that talks about how do we handle things like fake news. Yeah. We've mentioned this about previously versus fake news versus censorship. And in fake news, one of the battle is to use AI to help us filter news to figure out what's legitimate news versus like fake news. But one of the challenges with that too is they found that computer sometimes also gets its own bias or creates its own bias. Uh, we saw it in YouTube where a lot of the LGBT videos were being demonetized because of the YouTube algorithm. And the CEO said that they don't they don't have anything against them and they, that they didn't put any, um, they don't uh, try to demonetize them. I swear to God we talked about this too. <laughs> but, it was, but the reason is that the AI know. had a bias because a lot of LGBT often talk about sex. And yeah. And it demonetized videos that have our our sexual content in nature. Yeah. So it and it's hard for it for you to unteach that to a computer once it kind of figures that out. I think with this, of all things, is eventually it does just get better at it, and then it's not going to be a problem. Yeah. Oh, well, hopefully, maybe they can help it move it to say <laughs> like, hey, we're we're LGBT friendly here. I'm pretty sure uh, that eventually the algorithm just gets better, and then they it would it just that shit is they'll get better yeah. at catching those things. I and... think the AI will need more nuances. I all think right. that's something we need. In I'm glad we world. cracked that shell. Do you think they <laughs> have any uh, algorithms to catch any audio stuff? Audio stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they totally... Uh, so do you think there's any videos of ours that would be able to... Or would be taken down? Because no. I remember back then, I... Uh, what kind so- of stuff would you have to say? Like, you terroristy have- crap? Oh, like the beep. Like, um, you know how when you swear and you have that beep sound? Yeah. That's... Uh, most most if it, most modern YouTubers don't use that beep anymore. You know what? Yeah, because you get demonetized as soon as... You know so what? They use, uh, uh, they use different... Sounds. Yeah, different yeah. sounds. You know what? Uh, probably uh, shoots you up to their, like... 
pay attention list is if you start to trend really hard, then they, yeah. they take a look at you. Because there's a lot of videos. Anybody on YouTube <laughs> even looked at our. There is quite a lot of videos on YouTube. Like, it's it, it may be some fucked up shit, like just someone fucking dying and shit. And they won't, the censors won't catch it and, until they can see the traffic going into it. And there's like either complaints or their comments <laughs> or their or their algorithm picks so, it up so if our popularity suddenly like just exploded then they'd start paying attention to well us. if something if if our video well, we title check from google well if our yeah, video title was like from, from that adsense yeah if we're showing our like dick in the video then they're it's they're seeing it start to trend really hard yeah of course <laughs> we'll just tell so, it's the banksy so you're saying we should change our uh, logo that we have on our youtube uh to a picture of a dick well i'm not directly advocating that but if somehow <laughs> if dicks changes, yeah. just showed up on it you know <laughs> what can you do uh, you know what you know what the funny thing is when we started this i think the second episode we named it something sexual masturbation but better or something like that right that's we got a shit ton of traffic from that just yeah. by itself if I'm like, remember, that's not taken down if you remember we got a shit ton of traffic and right yeah. away like first frame we, there was like two bots that put comments down in there yeah say oh yeah sexy video <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love that it. was the height of our popularity i would love it the comments <laughs> so like dude. who's a girl at this time yeah <laughs> so the well, like this time? and i was thinking like why would you have these bots like what purpose does this serve maybe it's those russian bots <laughs> I'm like why why even make the time to create something like this just so you can search out possibly pornographic videos and then comment on it so we need more clickbaity kind of uh titles yeah so well, just yeah, say something very sexual and we'll use that as a title that's the only way to survive in youtube but um well, you can call this one sugar or shit sugar, sugar or shit? shit yeah yeah no that's sure. not sexy though you gotta really glam <laughs> it up it could be sexy there's probably some niche uh so there's some niche there's stuff for sure. Stuff out there that involves sugar and shit. I want to ask you. I I I want to ask you before before we talk about this. What? I just want to mention in YouTube they there's a there's a comment about how viral videos no longer exist, and um, one of the challenges like what? That's not what? Uh, well. I don't agree with that, but go on. <laughs> well, back then like YouTube. What do you mean comment? There's a comment that vi- viral videos don't exist. Well, I need to elaborate. So, <laughs> go on. <laughs> so back then, you know, when YouTube was more of like an indie indie thing, like a lot of TV networks weren't really on YouTube. It was a lot of creators and stuff. And you see, there were things like viral videos that we, uh, the news would start showing these YouTube clips saying like, oh, this funny dog or this like heroic yes, feed, yes. things like that, right? Yes. And then when TV network starts coming onto the YouTube platform and they have these huge subscribers, so say like... Um, Who's that fat guy? That, it's okay. We know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know that fat guy that does the car uh, karaoke? Uh, James. What, James what, Gordon? Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Yeah. So, like, if he creates a YouTube channel and he has, like, you know, millions of subscribers, right? He puts out a video and it gets all these uh, views. Would that be a viral video or is that just him just releasing a video to his subscribers? Right? Like, it in in terms of numbers, it's like a viral video. But it's not like a viral video in the sense that it's spawned authentically or naturally. I would say it depends on social media. If it spreads on other sites like yes. Reddit and Instagram or whatever, then, then, then it's, it's viral. So viral videos has a higher... If uh, it spreads, it's viral. It's just inflation, buddy. Like now viral means probably a billion yeah, views. That's right. that's it. Yeah. Back then okay. it was a million views. And, oh my God. So this is like the music industry problem where platinum means like... Well, I guess it doesn't that's, have that's too much of an effect. I yeah. guess that's a reverse in music because no one buy music anymore. But back then, the numbers were way were way harder to get like platinum albums. But now it's like way easier because like the number the numbers to get yeah yeah they're, triple they're platinum now. artists yeah. yeah they're 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 smaller numbers now. The quotas are way smaller. Because people don't buy music. Yeah, because yeah. music's not as good as it used to be. Yeah, that's <laughs> well, that's it's a more that digital. <laughs> people download. Yeah, yeah, our resident boomer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm the youngest one here. You might be. <laughs> you probably. Well, are. He, he did felt the worst about Don. Oh, Cherry. Don Cherry. Oh. 
Like, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't really upset about it. <laughs> yeah, Jason's our boomer tank all the time. What do you feel about climate change, uh, Jason? Man, it's just a bunch of bullshit. As expected <laughs> yeah. from the boomer. Yeah. I mean, climate's always been changing. Speaking yeah, of that's boomer, my opinion. I mean, we had a whole episode on it. Speaking of boomer and news, you know what? what stupid and actually made the news? I think it was like some uh, politician in New Zealand. She was doing a talk, a speech in her parliament or whatever. Right, yeah. Some guy interrupts her and then she says, yeah, whatever, boomer or whatever. And then just keeps on talking and that made news. <laughs> it was on headlines. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Oh, call out, call out culture. And, the, and no, no, it's not even call out culture. It's just, it's just, you know how cringy it is when the news reports on something and it's really dumb? Like, exactly that. Yeah. And, you know, and, and then the news anchors had to explain what boomer means to their audiences, too. Is that how the OK Boomer thing started? Yeah, that that's from it. OK oh, Boomer. Okay, that's the yeah, OK Boomer. Okay. And then became national news and you got anchors of their dolled up makeup it's, it's like the when s- they had to explain what 4chan was yeah, yeah. the hacker 4chan yeah it's, uh, <laughs> they, they had to explain boomer <laughs> you they know, had to explain boomer's whole population and then people that are just like what what the fuck why is this on here and I'm just imagining that maybe there's a demographic that this is like headline news like what is going on what are these young kids saying nowadays are they discriminating against us so sometimes it's funny because like you see the headlines it'd be like someone naruto runs into las vegas but they don't say the word naruto they just say runs and you're just like oh they missed out i've seen yeah but oh god it'd be so bad if they had to explain what naruto running is (laughs) just show it show with a clip (laughs) <laughs> like why, clip. why even watch the news at that point <laughs> and then people are like oh I should watch this Naruto <laughs> yeah <laughs> and they just Naruto gets a bunch of or a huge audience up. No, the, the, it's like a bigger. new research it's up people watching Naruto so or the opposite happens Naruto run. <laughs> <laughs> the boomers will be like these goddamn Chinese cartoons <laughs> <laughs> and then you just start you just start hearing boomers saying I want to be Hokage oh my god I? I imagine now actually I think boomers is more of a people it's almost like it's the new fucking term of this month it's like yeah. the new millennial <laughs> it is like, millennial, millennial used to be taken as an insult and now boomer is the insult really. this is counter culture <laughs> that, that is actually quite hilarious this I must is say. this is counter culture the, the boomers have lost the high ground we, and now the millennials have them on the run. Yeah, by calling them Imagine boomers. Just like some millennial kid calling an old guy boomer, and that guy going red in the face, and like just like just one word. Like, oh, you know, I saw just because of that. I saw a post where uh some some guy and he's fucking a boomer. He was actually saying like, oh, this is he's a, he is a fucking, fucking boomer. boomer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean yeah, that in a derogatory right. sense, but this is funny. He was making it into a derogatory thing. He's like, I can't believe I've lived to this age where now, you know, someone of age was 40, 50 or something <laughs> can now be discriminated against. This is just as, and he said this, this is just like the N word for us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, yeah. yeah I, I heard about that. Okay, boomer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? This is, well, I'm like, some days when you wake up, you're just like, is this like the alternate reality that you see in a show where like, you fucked up, you went back in time and you killed like Mr. Rogers or something, and this is the timeline that you live in now, that people are just... And it's not even just an alternate reality, it seems like we're switching realities every other day now. It's yeah, like... exactly, it's like, this, this is the reality where Donald Trump is president. We are the boomers, in the darkest timeline. The boomers yeah. are, uh, the boomers are suffering the same as the black people <laughs> back then. That, uh, that I... Yeah, I, I don't I, even see how that's comparable. Like, really, like boomers have it good. <laughs> I'm so, freaking asshole. For the boomers, there is a movie coming up called Mr. Neighbor. Mr. Neighbor? Oh, for, uh, oh Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Tom Hanks is yeah. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. That's not for the boomers, though, really. It's also for kids as well that grew up with Which that kids? Mr. Rogers. Not the current kids. Current Do kids you, don't even know him. Just to... This is slightly off topic, but... Do you consider us all millennials? Or Technically, what, you, what uh, do yeah, we fall? Yeah, we are. We are, are supposed to be millennials. millennials. Yeah, it's like 1980s. Yeah, 1980s. 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 Up to like before 2000, like because the af- the ones after us is the iGen, which is the iPhone. Uh, iGen. I always wait. Is that Gen Z? Like, yeah, Gen Z. I haven't Gen heard Z iGen. or iGen. Are you just making shit up? I've never heard of iGen. <laughs> well, yeah. Gen Z grew up in the age where i or mobile phones or iPhones existed, right? Yeah, so but iGen. But is that something I've you've never heard of that coined term. right now? iGen? Because I've never heard it. Could it could be, be, it could be um, <laughs> Steve Jobs who coined it. 
I've heard like Gen X. Right, pick on the guy who's dead that can't answer. Gen Z. He can't answer. We just need that seance. Which generation is Gen Y then? What's Gen Y? That's the confusion. Like, some would say us, but. Yeah. No, Gen Y I thought was before us. What the fuck would we. We're Gen Z then? No, Gen Z. We're not Gen Z. Okay, then we must be Gen Y then by just process of elimination but Gen was like a long time i think ago. we're like close to x to all right y. let's see if we can figure this out and just just with our just com- combined retardedness <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well i thought we were always boomers boomers obviously is world war ii kids born to 60. yeah during the world war ii right yeah like yeah, that's it. There's a the baby. There's a right. the baby. What do you boom. call the hippie generation from like you know? I guess our parents' age, like, like the ones after the boom. Yeah, sixties, seventies, and uh, and whatever. Did they have conventional names? When they were for born there. Would they be I, I Gen Xers? They're the one that got all the. They're Gen Xers, aren't they? I don't know. There we go. We 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 we, we can't solve this. <laughs> we, yeah. I don't I'm just gonna what? Google. It. I'm like, pretty oh. sure they're Gen X. We just right? we just have to look at how we live our lives. Like, or, do you guys eat avocado toast? No, no, no. Fuck that. Really or is Gen no. X? Is that? Wait, does that mean know. boomer? When you buy an avocado, do you buy the whole thing or do you just one slice at a time? <laughs> no, I eat the whole avocado. avocado. Wait, 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 oh yeah, say that again. Probably say what? It's a Brianism. If he's buying the whole avocado, oh. or if he's just buying a slice at a time. A slice of avocado. A slice of avocado. Can't yeah, buy a slice. I, uh, I only heard slice. Yeah. I'm like, are you talking about pizza? <laughs> <laughs> like, I buy the whole pizza usually. Didn't go over as I expected. No. <laughs> <laughs> Like but avocado. It was supposed to be a callback to the sugar thing, but it didn't work out. Oh, is it a callback to sugar? <laughs> You know, I was trying um, a recipe, and it called for maple syrup. I didn't have maple syrup. I didn't want to buy it. And then you started sweating because I could try to ask my neighbor. So I use, is he I renting? Use... Is he, does he own his place? <laughs> yeah. yeah, could I just go up to his tree and tap for sap? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just use honey, but honey doesn't seem to be a substitute for maple syrup. No. Okay. It goes baby boomers, Gen X, Gen Y, slash millennial, and then Gen Z. So, so Gen, Gen Y is y, millennial. Right? Yes. There we go. According yeah, to one. this graph from uh, Wikipedia, just under the generation uh, title or whatever you call it, subject. That makes sense. All right. All right. But we're taking you, We talked about this before. I may have mentioned this before, but when you are hanging out with the Gen Zs, do you have to talk in their language? Like you certain well, that, wait, lingos? That's the stuff? thing. Gen Z and Gen Y, there is overlap because it's like this is the timeline for yeah. it. What's yeah. the overlap? Like what years? Like uh, freaking 2000s, I want to yeah, say. Yeah, around the 2000s. My, my question is, since we've run out of alphabet right now, what's the next generation going to be? Gen, it goes back to A. <laughs> A1, yeah. A2, A3. It goes to Gen A, Gen B. Or A, A, A. Well, before the Gen XYZ and before Baby Boomer, there was the Lost Generation, Greatest Generation, and Silent Generation. Lost Generation. Which one's the Lost? I think these were... Lost Generation was around 1890. Oh, to 1900, wow. and then would they call them? The I'm just wondering if that's contemporary. Would the greatest generation call themselves the greatest generation at that time? I, I, th- it feels like it's like a post. I think that's just generational thing. The World War. It's that was around World War. Yeah, one, so. but yeah. like while they're fighting it, they don't know if they're gonna oh, yeah. win or not. So <laughs> I was like, I see what you yeah. Yeah, we're the lost it's, generation, it's, right? <laughs> so they could be. Like, we failed pretty hard, you know. Like we're the almost there generation. <laughs> But that was the uh, I you, one other thing that kind of <laughs> I always kind of laugh about. But they do this a lot of times in Hollywood, is especially if they do like a World War Two movie, like, and the specific movie I'm talking about is that new movie from Midway that came out on Remembrance Day. That's the one with the uh, World War uh, One. Yeah, it's like the seventeen. No, no, uh, no, it's no, like no. Fighter jets and stuff. They're not fighter out. jets. It's uh, it's it's the uh, Battle of the Pacific between America and Japan. Oh. And it was like Pearl Harbor, and then, you know, do a little raid and then Midway or whatever, right? Battle okay. of Midway. Okay. So is that like a sequel or? A no, movie it's movie like it's it's Pearl it's, Harbor. It's, it's a it's a standalone movie, right? But it's released for. <laughs> Veterans Day great. shit, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, cause Pearl Harbor is terrible. Like, fucking the 2001 Ben Affleck movie. Yeah, that's yeah. why we were laughing. It's like a sequel you know, to that. This was, this was, this was a lot. I, well, I don't know. I haven't seen it. It might be a steaming pile of shit. But from what I saw, from what I saw, it's just basically. Have you seen it? Yeah. It's, it's, My sister oh. had it on DVD. Wait, Midway? Or no, Pearl? no. Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. Okay. No, I'm saying, no, no. Pearl Harbor is a steaming piece of shit. Yeah. Midway, I don't know if it's a steaming piece of shit. Yeah, I haven't oh, seen it okay, yet. Okay. But uh, it's it's from the same guys that made Independence Day, so it's like heavy CGI, just a bunch of 
aerial battles and shit. Thing. Well, it's just for battles. You're not... people want practical C CGI's nowadays, right? Whatever. It's just for fucking battles, man. It's not like Lion King. Oh, actually, I watch a. Wait, wait, wait hold on, hold the fuck on. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold <laughs> Sorry. on. So, okay, so what they do in there, they, just to make it dramatic, they always say shit like, uh, if we, like, the di dialogue in the movie will be like, if we lose this, then it, this, then Japan will basically win or some shit like that. Like, this battle is so important, it's so decisive, blah, 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 blah. They hype it up in the movie itself, I right? I want to sound like Sir Winston Churchill. It's, well, some, they, they like to go for that. Like, this is a do or die, all or nothing sort of deal, right? And... You know, like some historians will also say, oh, yeah, Midway was such a decisive conflict. But, like, I just hate the way that they do it because in real life, even if they fucking lost Midway, America's going to fucking win anyways. But they got to hype it up for the movie at it's all for times. The movie, yeah. It's the tension in the movie. It all, for all times. It's the I same mean, like Valkyrie with Tom yeah, yeah, yeah. Cruise. But you saw what happened. He failed, right? He failed, <laughs> so yeah. It doesn't so fucking matter. It didn't matter, no. So, I mean, like, I, mean, like, I've, I've, I, was I was trying to think of movies where they don't hype it up. They, they, well, they don't have like a very a do or die overhype situation, and it turns out good. And I was like trying to think. Wasn't the uh, invitation game like that? They didn't really hype it. That was one of them, and I thought that was like yo, I that like was that pretty one, right? decent. It's, it wasn't like oh, if we don't figure this out, you know, fucking, it's all over. That. Oh, they kind of like, hyped it. They maybe kinda, they did. They they they're <laughs> like oh, we gotta figure it. But it was more about uh, pride and stuff. What and you know? What about Nolan's Dunkirk? Something like Maybe that, yeah. Really well, well, the hype in there, I guess, would be like, uh, fucking, we have our entire British, the entire British expeditionary armies out here. Yeah. So if fucking, if we can't get out from Dunkirk and evacuate, we're fine. The war's done. But that Prince was an actual no army. event, right? Well, that's so true it, too. They didn't but... really hype that. It's just they were. They it's didn't more, have any like individuals or no. anything saying like this is like yeah. this is it or Do we're or all die, dead. But... Yeah, and yeah. and. I think there's a couple hundred thousand people at Dunkirk. Churchill expected to probably at best evacuate 45,000. Yeah. He ended up getting a lot more than that, mm -hmm. right? So, whether he fuck, like at the end of the day, I think Battle of Britain, it wasn't, it wasn't really decided it, by the was army. Was it a good anyways. movie? Was it accurate? Dunkirk? It's pretty yeah. good. It was accurate. I don't, accurate? I, was I don't know. Fucking, I wasn't there at World good. War Two. <laughs> well, usually, it seems like, accurate enough. You, you like the authenticity. It seems. It seems. It's more authentic than Midway would be. Right. If I'm or gonna watch Midway, I'm yeah. gonna watch it just for the CGI, CGI. battle. They, they don't blow it up like there's like oh man, hundreds of uh, planes against hundreds of planes on this side. Like not huge, huge. Well, they are like the that. creators of Independence. You don't know yet. Yeah. Well. No. No. I mean Dunkirk. Oh, Dunkirk. 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 Nolan did it. Pretty well, like that looks pretty. That looks like it looks what much Dunkirk realistic like. than just like, yeah, like yeah. visually, it's great because you know you see the huge open sky and you get a grasp of like. He seems to be well, the into that uh, CG stuff now. Well, the people's um, like he gets the reaction, like the tensions are pretty good, and then the shots are really good as well as cinematography. Yeah, he he's, gets he's that. Don't forget that. Yeah, the score is always building. If you notice, in Dunkirk. yeah, it's always like I heard, I heard, I heard that's what he was just, really going for. Yeah, it just it's always building. The music was definitely the highlight. In that movie, that was all right. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just I see. It seems to be just a very Hollywood-ish thing to always hype up, and it's always a do-or-die situation. And I think I don't know. I I think people are getting to the point where it's just like yeah, that seems a little bit cheesy nowadays. That but that's that's like the legit Hollywood. Like that's the Michael Bay. Hollywood. But maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe they're going for the audience who don't know what Midway is. They don't know like. If this is a well, yeah, battle or I'm not. sure they expect most people to not know what it is. They're just going in for like the action. Yeah. Yeah. So like to say it's like, I mean, to the people who are fighting it, maybe they feel that way, and so in that sense, they could they could totally push it that agenda without being authentic. I I I think the people that were fighting it are most likely scared shitless and don't have any ideas of grandeur <laughs> going through their head while they're just trying to get through it yeah well the thing is like and not die the thing is uh some people they'll just i guess the the worst thing that can happen is just people watch that and just believe it's real life i guess <laughs> yeah but people do that all the time they'll watch they do it yeah they do it all the time they'll watch a uh, social network and expect that that's the events that happen and that's they what are happens. unable to distinguish between dramatized for a movie and what it seems like. Well, it's also because real life seems so drama. It, it, it's, you it's, they got to insert the drama into your <laughs> entertainment that you see. I just wish I can't wait for the time when, in the future, when people make movies about Donald Trump. 
It would you, you see, I imagine that uh yeah, it'll be so many different takes of him. Yeah, there'll be like a bumbling fool take, there'll be like an evil take, and then there'll be one guy who's like, you know what, I'm gonna take the I'm gonna try to get the sympathetic this, like the, the triumph. There's, there's like, gonna be the one where he plays. Like himself. he actually sees yeah, aliens <laughs> and he wants to push that wall. There will be yeah. like, <laughs> no, no, the one where is, the sympathetic one was like he did it all and he suffered in silence or something. Yeah, he is Caesar, he like is trying to do good. But he, he got corrupted. He got corrupted. <laughs> It would just oh my god! Like the the Democrats got him. They 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 pushed that uh, subpoena, and yeah, yeah. Yo, I still you know this is that's big news too, and I still stand by that nothing's fucking gonna happen. Oh nothing's yeah, they're still pushing. Yeah. Nothing's gonna happen. They keep oh, oh, like on the on the Dem side. Like if you watch, like um, who are the like those late night talk show like Steve Colbert's and stuff. Yeah, they're saying like, oh, Trump is screwed. They're salivating. Well, they salivated they over. Keep, they keep doing that, and I'm just like, are is he like? Why is it taking so long? They're just doing the that for the actual comedy of it. That that would be the best case scenario for them because they might have more be, to talk about. It, it might be. I mean, be. Trump has skyrocketed late night shows. Like their view numbers are huge because of Trump. Because, oh yeah, God! Yeah. I think Conan even said that at one point. He's like, I hope he does win because that'll be great for late night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that the downside is you always have to talk about him. Like you can't. It's oversaturated. You cannot it's oversaturated because that's what people want nowadays. Yeah. They, well, they go there just to get their fix, almost, right? They do. I mean, people don't even watch like regular news. Like they'll watch late night to get their news. In fix. some ways, it's right. It's it's just as accurate as regular news, to it's, be honest. Like all the late night shows yeah, have yeah, become, that I mean, but that—that's what I mean. Like the, like like if you watch, uh, what's it called? Seth Meyers. Seth Meyers, or even I like uh, Trevor Noah better. Trevor Noah, yeah, Trevor Noah. It's like good. I I get one my news from Trevor Noah rather than watching CNN <laughs> or Fox or something. That's the fucked up part, right? But like back then, Daily Show was the comedic news takes th- sort of deal. Yeah. Now it's like almost every late night show is doing that fucking th- just just talking about Trump. I think a portion of that is Always. because Trump is so ridiculous already. Yeah. And they could tell the truth and it will get laughs. It and is but new- the news is almost yeah exactly. Yo but you ever hear uh, you ever see them when they get serious and shit like especially when it was like uh, what Mueller report or even when Trump won all the late night hosts they had to get serious and fucking talk about it seriously. There was no comedy involved. It was just yeah, you, you can tell it's serious when they turn off the laugh track. Yeah, especially yeah. Colbert. He had to have uh, his monologue when Trump won. It was almost as if a tragedy happened. Yeah, Colbert was upset. Certainly. Yeah, so then it had it became this whole fucking thing, and then they are they've all put their eggs, the comedic eggs, into the Trump basket. Yeah, but it's making them millions. I bet. Oh, well, maybe not millions. Can you imagine Trump's not president in the future and then uh, their yeah. writing staff was like what did we joke about before Trump <laughs> yeah, well they probably it. let go of the old scallies and hired a bunch of new writers for Trump and then your resume just writers. be like writing jokes about Trump oh man yeah, I, you know what I, just, I can't wait until they can just fucking stop talking about it. I don't want it look how it's over like you said, it's oversaturated. How many times have we come back to Trump in this podcast alone, and we don't even talk about it? Shit, makes news every who day. brought it up? Actually, you know who, who brought up Trump this time? I pretty much never bring him up. So. <laughs> well, I brought it up a few times before. I brought him up a couple of times. Sir. Well, today, I know the least about politics, so I think that's what was it? What was it? I, I brought him up tons of times too. But who brought it up today? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back. Well, we got the track. I'm gonna roll it back. We gotta, we to gotta make a mind map. That's what I'm saying. For you, <laughs> only for you. It'd be great if, like, it's like for the viewers, they we make this mind map and they could just follow along no. with their finger. And I think that's the easiest way to lose they just viewers. Like, they just get lost in the maze. They would just look at the overview of the map and be like, "Fuck this shit." I'm yeah. not listening. If you want to make a map, true. we could do that. You know, but the then map... you have to make it for every episode. Or I could see it like if someone's listening and they like have these pictures and they are drawing those strings like a conspiracy person. I do not see that at all. I think if you can imagine that, there's already some things that you need to explore. <laughs> what professionally? <if> they <laughs> compile it for like all our episodes, and there actually is a conspiracy. Like Brian's like freaking incepting us or something. B money incepting <laughs> us? Fucking, yeah. I wouldn't worry about it. He's scared to ask his neighbor for fucking sugar. But that's part of his plan. To incept us with whatever stupid thing you would incept us with. <laughs> oh, if I can plant the idea, give him head, sugar. That's what they'll it is. Give me the sugar. <laughs> you become, and I won't even have to ask. Yeah, you become one of us. will give him a container the, for it. The trigger word is "give me sugar." <laughs> that would be. 
You know what? Quite the long con. There. I'll make it a duty of mine to never give you sugar. <laughs> what was that Korean movie where the In long any con sense of the word. was so ridiculous? <laughs> Uh, which was to force the guy who ruined his life to have sex with his daughter. Ah, uh, oh boy. Oh boy, yeah. Have you guys seen that oh movie? Oh boy? Yeah. That was like the most ridiculous... Like, it's a guy with a lot of money, so but a lot of time, and this, he Wait. had this most ridiculous long con to get back at the one person. Are you, are you talking about the Thanos remake? The one with Josh Brolin? Yeah. Yeah, there was a... It was There's a, an English remake, yeah. There's an American remake. With, uh, is the story with the Elizabeth the Olsen in, in it, too? Yeah. I was saying I so. I imagine so. I it's didn't a see Korean, the American The Korean one. is the original one. Oh, yeah. But I think so. I think I it's the. I think it's it? the exact same ending. I saw like halfway through the Josh Brolin one, and then I was like, I don't understand what the. Fuck is going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean the Korean movie was like kind of like that too. I had no idea. What was Korean going one's on. more messed. Up, I think but. the American one bombed it. I the Korean one was good. I I haven't seen it. it. Oh, it wasn't. Bad. I don't think it got really good reviews. I don't think it did good. I don't but, think it did uh, good. Yeah. Just like how the fuck I've seen live action and Death and Note. Did Korean you like Old Boy? It's pretty messed up, but overall, as a movie itself, it's pretty good. Yeah. Just keep uh, in mind, it was made a, quite a while, quite a while, a while ago. ago. Yeah. So for that time, I think it was, it would blow, it would have blown some people's minds quite a number. Of yeah. Even the American remake has been a few years now. I think it was like it 2012 been. or something yeah. like that. Twenty. Correct. It's just pretty brutal. But yeah. So what do you? What is your take on that? The guy, that was the longest con. That I was guess. the longest con. I think he had. It was a lot of. I think it was silly. Honestly. <laughs> I thought it was just like you had. You're rich. You have all this time. There's so much better things to do. Holy shit! You know what? This is surprising. I would have thought you're like this is the yeah, perfect. You didn't con. go far enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah I, I, I wish I could do something like that one day. That would be a masterpiece. I just don't think it was practical. The B money did. magnum opus. Just have a fucking con going on for twenty plus years. Because he had, he had to do it the whole time when his daughter grew up. Yep. Yep. And just control everything. I felt like it was just a movie. Or that twist, and uh, if you well, knew the twist going yeah, that's in, the story. I felt like oh the shit! Did you really did you watch the movie properly, or did you fucking Wikipedia, or did you watch it from uh, end to beginning? This was this was a no. this was back in the day. So you I, still before I was you watched uh, it properly before I was woke. So you can see that fucking if you saw that movie the other way, your way, it would have ruined the whole fucking thing. Yeah, I wouldn't enjoy. Well, yeah, it. any movie with a twist. <laughs> If you read because he doesn't Wikipedia believe in Wikipedia. twists or whatever, right? But you admit no, no, no. that you. I I believe. You don't believe in spoilers. Yeah, I don't believe in spoilers. That's why I don't believe it. I believe that a good story <laughs> is still a good story, even if yeah, you know Ryan the ending. Believe in spoilers. But that's a good story. But it would be shit if you spoiled it, right? Yeah, it would be shit. Yeah, so funny. <laughs> so, so in that case. But it it would mean that it wasn't a good story. But you just said it was a good story. No, no, no. I never said that movie. I didn't. Did I enjoy it when I first watched it? I don't think I enjoyed it even when I first watched it and I saw the twist. Oh, like when I experienced the twist. I wonder if how much you can backtrack when everything's recorded. <laughs> <laughs> but what? I, well, anyways, uh, yeah. To correct Jason, I don't believe in spoilers. I believe that if it's a good story, it still be a good story even if you know the ending. I think there's a weird phrasing going on because he doesn't believe <laughs> in spoilers. <laughs> No, it but like twists weird. are fine. I like I enjoy twists. Like, but a great. twist is a spoiler. But it's not a twist for you. If, what if, yeah, if you know the if twist, I know the twist, then it's then not a twist for me. Yeah, yeah. correct. So, so yeah, when like you, you just the twist, you'd need to not know the spoilers. Yeah, correct. Like there is a movie that I have not done research on that I'm kind of interested in seeing. People told me not to read it. What? Uh, it's a movie called Parasite. It's a Korean movie. Uh, it's currently out right now. Yeah, I plan to watch that soon. Okay, yeah. so. Okay. So I, I, it's a yeah. So it's made by the guy who made um, Snowpiercer, and I enjoy Snowpiercer. Yeah. Um, you but, seen it? Yeah, I saw Snowpiercer. There. Oh no, no, Parasite. Sorry. No, not Parasite. No, not Parasite. Okay. No, not Parasite. But yeah, yeah. No, I, I was thinking about this too. This fucking little gymnastics you're doing in your. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would like because you, if you spoil a movie with a twist, it's not good. But the twist makes it good, right? It's good with the twist. It's a good. No, story. because. Oh, it makes it good for the first watching, sure. But yeah. it, it's almost like a cheap movie. Like, it's kind of like that movie with, uh, uh, what's his name? It's like the... Um, Prestige. No, no. Prestige that that movie awesome. is great, even if you knew the twist. Because yeah. then you start seeing it. It's a, lot, it's a lot better when you know the twist, I think. Yeah, but it's like a lot of movies where movies with a twist, 
you see it the first time, you're like, oh, that's a great twist, and then you watch it again to like try and to see so if you much can. Better, right? I mean, no, 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 no so much they're... better. You just watch it again to see more if you get movie. hinted towards you're more woke it. Or, to the like, movie, yeah. You're like, oh, is there? But there's some movies that aren't it? like that. Like, there's a twist that when you rewatch it, it's it's more infuriating. Because there was never any hints for you to I know, know but the twist. It's you that know, slows that, uh, that like. Yeah, um, but you know, those movies are, it was just meant, it was basically like it was built, that movie was created for that one watch where you don't know what's going to happen. But that right? movie. Um, I mean, the, the thing I'm saying is like, you're, you're saying the movie's good if you can watch it backwards and it's good and you want to watch it, you know, the I'm proper way. I'm saying the movie should, should stand on it. So but on that's more merits not, than just a twist. That's not even what they were going for, though. But I mean, I mean, there are certain movies. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean like, there was a movie I watched. It was a doc- mockument- documentary and it's called, uh, oh, I forgot what it's called. Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll, fi- I'll finish what I'm trying to say. Oh, sorry. Um, so it's like if a it's like if a chef plans a meal from appetizer entree to dessert specifically I guess curated or whatever the fuck they call it for that night you're not gonna like if you eat it from dessert entree appetizer it's like he was he didn't mean for that to fucking be eaten like that way but you if you eat, ate it that way and just said well you know what if it tasted terrible going from dessert entree to appetizer wow this piece of shit. But then he created for you to eat it, appetizer, entree, dessert. You can't really say, oh, that meal is shit because, you know, I ate it backwards. There's, there and certainly it is a criticism where when I watch a TV series in the wrong order, that but, it wasn't how the creator intended. Yeah. So and that is harder. It is, uh, yeah, where if my judgment would be, um, I guess, discredited because yeah. of that. So, I mean, like, I do agree you, with could, that. you could ruin... Like a movie that's actually pretty good and was intended in its maximum effect to be watched normally. But it's kind of like eating a food that, like, say, has a pop rock, and that was the experience. Is that a surprise? And if you knew it coming, and you're like, oh, it doesn't taste that great because it because it's like. But there are movies that are good, ju- not just because it has a twist. It was just good. For I would say the, the movie twist. was good for the first watch experience, but it's. I wouldn't say it's a good movie. No. So, uh, is there an oh, example? Can you name a movie that you've watched multiple times? Uh, yeah, a lot of, not Nolan's older movie. I watched multiple times. Yeah. So the Prestige, I watched multiple times. Yeah. So I watched. Um, well, I'm just saying. Memento. Yeah. Dark <laughs> Memento. Memento. The movie itself is going. It's supposed to go from that to four. You watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it in the correct order. You watch it the other way. It's like watching Benjamin Button backwards. <laughs> oh, he's go- he's going from a baby to an old man. <laughs> How novel is that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you, you you admit like that you could ruin some actually good movies by doing it your way from I fucking can, ruin. I can ruin potentially good first viewing of the movie. Yeah, yes. yeah, but, but I wouldn't say they're good movies. If that was what it hinges on, that you had to not know anything to watch it, enjoy it. I don't think it was a. a well, movie. is there an example of that kind of movie? Um, like, like. Like where a movie is only enjoyable if you didn't know what it was that going in, kind of thing. No, I mean, a like, movie that's only good because of a twist. There's a lot of movie I feel like hinges on twists that are only good because of the twist, and once you know the twist, it doesn't feel like. But like movie. Sixth Sense. Like Sixth Sense, yeah. Like a lot of people talk so much about that movie, but I feel like if you knew the twist going in, it's probably just okay. I don't even remember the movie. But the twist is what most people remember it to be. I see dead people. What? <laughs> Where? <laughs> like, Emma and I, Shamlai, based on his track record, I'm not impressed with it. Any well, of his his movies, movies generally aren't good. Well, he, aren't he good, came yeah. back pretty good with, like, Split and... Uh, even Split, when I watched it, was... It's better He's than He's not a good director. And there was it's the other, better, but it's not a good movie. There was the other horror one just before Split. It was about m- Mother or something like that. Was called. Is that by him? No. no, not Mother's not by him. Not Mother, but it was something... Actually, I just want to go quickly back. You talk about CG with um, Midway. Midway, yeah. I watched Spider-Man, the recent one with um, Far Away From Home. Yeah, it feels a little bit too CG. I thought the CG was great, though. No, oh, you did. I really enjoyed the CG. I thought it's, it's all CG. That's why it's too CG. It's it's entirely CG. When um, when Mysterio puts him in the the locker room and changes his costume. Yeah. Everything, all that whole thing was made by CG. Oh okay. yeah. So the actors didn't. It's too CG. To I I enjoyed it. I liked it better than the first Spider-Man. It was movie. so funny because like his costume, like he was wearing that gray suit and he had these drones flying him. Mm-hmm. That's a mocap suit. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's just like, oh, so practical. We need the super animation or CG, and that could be his costume. It's so cost saving. You know what? What movie I feel like is uh, the CG actually looks more faker than what they did before Jurassic Park. I feel like the dinosaurs that they had, or what, or the effects that they had in the it was very first great. couple Jurassic Park movies. I feel like it was done better. Than the current ones. Than the current ones. Well, a lot of the reasons why... Well, the first one is, like, it wasn't much CG. It was a lot of practical effects. Like, it they actually made yeah, it, was, it was, like, animatronics. Yeah, it holds up great. Yeah. And it's also... They have certain weight. Their lighting was good. Like, they, 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 they create certain elements so that the CG... They didn't have to do a lot of CG. Like, they didn't do a lot of dinosaur in broad daylight. Whereas the current one did, right? Yeah. Because Broad Daylight was a lot more hard because you had to draw a lot of different... Well, things. I understand them too. Like when they went to CG, they they had they had to get some fucking company or whatever, CG artists but to the big thing too, render all that, that yeah. shit. The big thing is CG is a support to the story. It should like, be, yeah. Like if the story's not good, no one cares how good the CG is really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, well, just fucking... For, what's CG? Like... You know, a company Blizzard, right? Like they make, they're famous for making amazing cinematics, they cinematics for their games. Films, yes. And their latest one for Diablo Four. Diablo Four, right? That was twenty minutes long. It was, it was basically like its own short story, it right? Was. It yeah. was great, and it was good. It was probably one of the best game trailers Actually, I've, I've seen. I think a lot of um, the goodwill came back to them because remember last yeah. year <laughs> when when people when they showed the Diablo Mobile and people were like, "This is yeah, a joke!" F- Holy shit! Wow. I'm not gonna. Blizzard was got such a shit but this BlizzCon was successful. Pretty successful, yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of their games got a lot of great updates, and Blit, uh, Diablo. But there's no did. well, there's no dates really for. Yeah, probably be years. Well, coming from soon. Now. That's their trademark. Yeah, but the like when they announced Blizz, uh, Diablo three, I think it took them four years or so until it actually came out. Oh, did they? Oh, because uh, Warcraft Reforged, that's the remodeling of Warcraft three. They're still working on it. The beta's out, and I think you can play three races out of the four, and it looks amazing. Fuck, man, I don't even know how I feel about it, cause I, cause you gotta, you gotta divert some resources to remaster some of these old games. I don't even why. Well, they're I, they're doing it from ground up, like they're yeah. Well, that's models. the thing. Like, it's why crazy. I don't even. I'm not gonna play it. Like, th- I think it's because there's a community that enjoys it. And, they um, do, but I feel like it's almost a little bit wasted. I mean, oh, wouldn't it be better? Other departments? Well, wouldn't it be better if they just came out with a fucking new game? Like, what if it, what if they came with Warcraft Four, right? They could, they could. I just feel like instead of going back to like, Starcraft Two, I don't know if it did well. And maybe, in the beginning, it did well. In remember? the beginning, I think a lot of people were. Wings of Liberty. Back that was nostalgia. the yeah. Wings of Liberty was done. Wings of Liberty well. did well, but every succession afterwards. It did not. I'm just thinking. The numbers well, were fuck, not as good. What if they wasted less time on remastering fucking uh, Frozen Throne and Warcraft and they Three? Warcraft Four. And they and they did Starcraft fucking. 3. They did oh, a WoW. Okay. Yeah, they did I a like WoW reboot as well, or whatever, like original oh, WoW. Oh yeah, yeah they brought WoW classic, classic WoW back. Yeah, and classic all, WoW. And then the new WoW, their story is kind of weird too. Sylvanas. Is, up the, yeah, she's the yeah, new the like other fucking, cinematic. Well, no, she's not the new Lich King. She just ripped she up the, the destroyed the helmet. The, yeah. But it isn't like it doesn't like. Wasn't there always that phrase? There must always, always, always be a Lich King, King. until you know you <laughs> fucking on it. No. But yeah, I feel stupid about that. that too because I feel that's kind of dumb because there's a lot of fans that played Warcraft three, me, me, mine included, Frozen Throne, right? And the epitome of that was Arthas being Arthas becoming the Frozen, Lich King, the yeah. Lich King. It and didn't then, look like Arthas in the uh, No, it's Boulder. It's not Yeah, Arthas. it's a it's different it's, guy. He because Arthas got wrecked. I don't think she could have beat Arthas. But yeah, we want to say that because she, <laughs> yeah. just, just, she just rolled over the yeah, fucking new Yeah, like Lich no contest. King. But, I mean, like, if you... Let's just say if they came out with World, Warcraft 4, if you didn't play WoW, you'd be like, who the fuck is this guy? Where's Arthas? Actually, that is what they're doing with Warcraft 3 is they're retconning some of the storylines. Oh, fuck. Because uh, Cause Sylvanas... Because they, they made it with WoW and shit. Yeah, right? they're trying to do that. Like, so Sylvanas and Jaina... Are more prominent in WoW than they were in Warcraft Three. Yeah, so they're gonna add some more backstory. Fuck sakes, I I don't know. Like, I can't keep. I'm up. sure. I'm sure they're gonna honor like, Warcraft Three. They fucking well. kill off all the main guys. Like Illid. Well, I think they killed off Illidan they at killed first. Killed Illidan, yeah. Oh, and he was the, the main guy. Frozen Throne, they killed them all. Oh, but with this new uh, upside down world kind of thing, they could actually bring anyone back. That's a fucking. <laughs> no, I think Illidan is like... still gonna die. They said that they're gonna make the cutscene a lot better between Arthur's and Illidan. Yeah, because it was ridiculous. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was pretty cheap. <laughs> but they they said they're gonna make it longer. So I'm actually excited for. It. All right, whatever. Man. Have you guys all play World of Warcraft? No, I was, I was uh, talking about World of Warcraft, Warcraft Three. Yeah, Warcraft okay. Three. I Warcraft Three, I did. Never played. I never played uh, WoW. Yeah, never played WoW. Never. No, no just, never got into WoW. 
But imagine how big it could be. Like it's expensive. I know. I would just you got so Warcraft is not the same as World of Warcraft. It's the same universe, but it's a different well, sort of game. Wow! Wow okay. is a continuation of Warcraft Three. Wow okay. is like an MMORPG. You play, pick a character, get skills. You you know you fucking outfit yourself and you go on quests and shit. Warcraft Three was more like real time strategy. All the previous Warcraft games. All the Warcraft. Not really. Games it's all of, all of it with more, I guess. Because yeah, the hero, the whole hero mechanic is so different. It's still RTS. No, I'm saying all of the ones before it's Wow still, were it's still RTS. RTS. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's all I Warcraft see, One, Two, Three. It's all so RTS. War, Warcraft Three was on what platform? It's a PC. 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 PC only. Was there? It's still, yeah, still I think PC. it was PC only, but they may have ported it to a console. They ported uh, Starcraft and th- Nintendo, Nintendo sixty four. Yeah, that was. I remember you, you Diablo was on. Uh, <laughs> Diablo Nintendo was on 64 as well. PlayStation, I think. Well, Diablo is the one that makes right. sense if you can port it onto a console. Like you, it's, yeah, yeah. You can use console controls. It's still not. Yeah, as you're not comfortable. RTSing, man. <laughs> RTS. Can <laughs> yeah. you imagine? Yeah, do like use that joystick to select a throw. Yeah, you know, my friend had StarCraft 64. I had it on PC, and he's like, "Oh my god!" He's like, "Why? Why? Why did they do this? This is such torture. <laughs> this is one of the worst things I've ever can invented." Can you imagine, like? Yeah, manage this company, but your tool is this like arcade. Okay, man, come on, he bought it for sixty four. He thought it was meant for sixty four. He's like, why would they make a game like this? Oh shit, we're approaching nine. You gotta go. I did the yeah. si- signal, so you w- <laughs> I wouldn't be calling it out. It's okay, you <laughs> like, just, just call it out. Don't <laughs> joke. What just added it out? Who gives a shit? Out Who gives a shit? Did you guys want to talk more, or you want to leave it at this? Yeah, I think it's a good place to stop since we're uh, ready. I'm stopping. I'm open. My timeline. I freed it up for our fans you're open what does that mean you want well they complained last time it was too short right <laughs> who complained <So. laughs> who complained our did dedicated so, fans did somebody com- complain yeah probably some just in their chat yeah friend. <laughs> my friends <laughs> <laughs> no one else listens our admins <laughs> i've done a couple hours today. Dude, dude, it's almost two hours it's all it's all good we'll just end it fair enough okay final well, thoughts then if you yeah you have any final uh, thoughts we got blizzcon five was good uh hearthstone I'm really happy that this guy Sos is back playing. Okay, uh, rank 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 uh, BlizzCon stuff. Oh, best to worst. The best thing is Heart, this guy Sos playing Hearthstone again. That's you rank Hearthstone as best <sighs> thing at BlizzCon? No, my best thing is this guy's toes is playing Hearthstone again. That's fuck. Who no, no. <laughs> Wait, what? That's still what I said. You're saying the best thing about BlizzCon that yeah. was announced. This guy's was, toes. That's was this guy Sos playing Hearthstone again? That's yeah. fucked, man. That's no one, no one has no. that at the top. It goes of the list. Diablo <laughs> announcement. <laughs> And then, well, maybe Overwatch for me because I actually liked Overwatch. What did that. they say about Overwatch? Overwatch Two. You oh. are so fucking. <laughs> yeah, you're like this guy's you toast. This guy's like you know, big oh. announcement. Was it like? Was it good? Was the Cinemax good? Cinemax always good. Okay, you it's still Blizzard. Did you like Overwatch? Yeah, Overwatch I just I kind of played around with it on my brother's PS4. It's kind of, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to I say going the other way. Yeah. He wants to say yeah. shit. <laughs> no, no, I was gonna say like. I was just gonna say it's fun. I might actually get into it. That's yeah, it's a good game. Say. No, it's a great game. I th- I think some people were upset with cer- some metas, but that's normal. I don't get that much time to yeah. play video games. Nah, it's kind of interesting because they I'm come sure. at I'm a time when uh, on, uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. You are? Yeah, I'm still like halfway through that. That's the last game I started. Playing. I feel like they kind of. I don't. Was it what, what? What? The latest Assassin's Creed game that they that people say was good. Yes. Yeah. They did say it was good. So that's yeah. a, I. I've, I feel like like, Egypt, right? Is that the latest one? That was Origins. The next one was the Odyssey. Oh yeah, that was good too, though. Yeah. From what I hear, it's interesting Overwatch too because they're coming at a time where, um, what's that other game that really main shooter with the where you build stuff again? Fortnite. Fortnite. Fortnite Two is coming out. Oh yeah, I don't care about Fortnite. Okay. It'll be bigger for people that play Fortnite. Oh well, Fortnite probably be bigger because they have a bigger player base. So, okay, sorry. So yeah. Diablo Four. Overwatch 2. Hearthstone's at the bottom for me because I've <laughs> never played the bottom? Okay. it. How about Warcraft, uh, WoW, and Warcraft 3? I, I don't play WoW either, so okay. <laughs> it doesn't affect really me. care about that. I don't think they did anything for StarCraft. I no, don't think, I don't think so. What else do they have? Well, they ended it, too. I, I can't see them doing anything else for StarCraft app now. Yeah, after, after remaster, I don't, I don't think there's much on StarCraft. They could do StarCraft Ghost. That project died a long time. but Yeah, first-person... Starcraft game that'd be great yeah well I think that became Overwatch so. <laughs> yeah but that's still different from a first person Starcraft game I don't mean I mean like an actual like maybe story or something like make it horror-esque 
and you're just like oh like fear I think that's yeah. shit to say well least. except more like it's gotten cancelled so many times it's probably radioactive it's, now yeah, I don't think they want to touch gone. it probably yeah whatever. but you have no idea like when I was I saw watching Hearthstone because this guy still stopped playing Hearthstone holy fuck but now that he's back it's, it's fun to watch no one else watches don't even this know <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about right now <laughs> would this... you name that as number one I was like are you fucking jo- this has to be ironic <laughs> <laughs> who gives a shit <laughs> <laughs> but you give a shit. I do. Yeah. Kudos to you. I think Disguised Toast should fucking sponsor us just because you're his biggest. Fan. What is this name you're saying? Disguised Toast. He's a Hearthstone the, streamer. The he's, Sky well, player. Disguised he's toast. more like a TFT now. The yeah. Sky is Toast. Disguised, disguised. like Dis- a disguise, uh, wearing a disguise. There's, uh, there's a card in a Hearthstone called SI Seven Agent, and when he comes in, he says, "This guy is Toast." Okay. But it's like a pun to. Disguise toast to disguise just toast. Just filling your head with knowledge cool. you don't, never need and to know in your he, life. He <laughs> no, I just I wasn't sure what the hell you're saying. <laughs> no, actually I was confused too. It's his stream was. I thought um, it was this guy's toes. Like <laughs> I thought that's what I heard first, and I saw this it's, this guy is toast. It's our yeah, Chinese I accents that. that are coming through. Yeah, well, yeah. This guy's toast. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah, it's first I did hear this yeah. guy's this I'm like, guy's okay, toes. That's a cool name. This, okay. It's a good name. Uh, Conan Bryan said it was one of the best gamer name he have heard of. Oh, shit. He had a call out because yes. uh, Conan Bryan was saying, This guy's toast. Where is he? Shit. I want to meet him. And... You must have ejaculated right in your pants for that <laughs> whole Conan episode. That's, 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 that's how if he was wearing popular, pants. Yeah. <laughs> right into your TV. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. You want to wrap this up before we go Any, nuts or for, something else? Anything on your end for BlizzCon? Did you like it? Uh, I Just Diablo 4. That's it. Uh, I mean, out of everything, I don't know. I'm like a more casual person with uh, Blizzard nowadays. Like I don't keep up with much of anything. So you play, play Diablo three then? I don't even play that now. But yeah, I played it when it came out. The game shit. you play the most is probably Hearthstone. I play Hearthstone the most because it's so fucking casual. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you, you, but but would you rank that as number one? No, I would that? definitely not. I'd never <laughs> rank you it. Play top of anything. Battlegrounds is. No, I would not rank. Fun. I would not rank Hearthstone top of anything. But. Diablo 4 took the cake for me, and a lot of it has to do with that fucking cinematic trailer they put out. And the gameplay trailer, I don't know. I want them to improve on shit. It looks okay. Like It looks more like dark and gothic horror Yeah, they said they're going back to the first one. Yeah, that's, that's like what a, worked. The more creepier style? The more what, occult- was, what was the third one? Like? Occult- well, it was, it was a little bit too colorful. It was more like... Too colorful. It was a little bit it too colorful. colorful. It was like brighter and. Oh, like you're fighting the sand in Star Desert. Well, no, well, because Diablo two you had uh, Luke Golane setting it's in the desert, but they did it really well. Mm-hmm. But in three, I don't know. Yeah, the art is a little off. The gameplay, more or less, is still clicking the whole time, so yeah, it's not it's much a different. Fest. But oh, you def- could trade. Uh, here you could trade items again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the uh, three live even. auction, the real money auction, or some shit like that, right? Well, three, they had the auction one, but yeah. before that, you know, you could actually, like, drop items for other people and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, trade. Yeah, yeah, and then but Battle.net chat that had, <laughs> he had a whole, like, fucking market going on. But uh, four looks like, I feel like Diablo is a game where the environment, the setting matters a lot. They're going back to the roots, which I think is a good thing. Yeah. As long as they actually follow through properly. The class, as, If the classes are fun and whatever, if you... Then it should be fine. The story as well, except for kind of the one thing I, I'm 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 still on about. The story so like well, yeah, I feel like the well the one thing I'm on about. Like, I like are they still gonna call it Diablo? I mean, like <laughs> <laughs> he even... fucking god, and he's like more powerful. Like Lilith is supposed to be Mephisto's daughter, so Diablo is her uncle. So it's like yeah, you know, like villain wise. Yeah, you know, we've already defeated... Grasping at straws now. Yeah, we're already... This is like the B team that's coming down. This is a Dragon Ball Z problem. But... Had this problem. Well, it's no, it's not a Dragon Ball Z. It's she, Lilith's not stronger. Uh, it's, she doesn't give, like, the impression that you're, she's stronger than Diablo. It's just mm. they've run out of villains. Oh, she has a cool cape. Yeah, but that cinematic fucking that makes up for it. Pretty sweet. I want to play the game because that cinematic was fucking sick. Even if, you know, Lilith, Lilith is not as hype as Diablo. All right. With that, we'll uh, finish up this episode. Yeah, well, I should I should finish up with a PSA. Yo, I think okay. he gave like multiple right, PSAs sure throughout the entire. Right. Th- Let's see what this PSA is. Oh, the last PSA was um, tomatoes. They don't belong in the fridge. They, okay. They taste really bad. You heard it from B Money, folks. Yeah. So, tomatoes don't put it in the, best, the fridge. The best thing to do is when you buy tomatoes is to leave them on or your counter. Eat them. Okay. Yeah, All right. Eat them. Yeah. Leave them on your counter. All right. Them in the fridge. All right. Okay. Care. I wish Thanks I could just cut your. <laughs> 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 oh, you do have the power, technically. 
I do. Thanks for listening. Switch it um, whatever. Click stuff. Subscribe. Yeah. And like, comment, subscribe. Yeah, thanks that, for listening. That's what I mean. All that yeah. stuff. You yeah. know the, the social you. media stuff. All, All right. right. Our loyal yeah. fans. Please listen to us more. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>